Welcome everyone to Houston, the Monarchy Car Fair Bowl of Texas. These are the Red Raiders on the kickoff return against Minnesota. A flag down on the play. If it stands, it is a sparkling return by Jakeem Grant. What a response by Jakeem Grant and Texas Tech after the field goal by Minnesota. Let's see what this flag is about. Offside on a kicking team, number 31. Finally declined without playing touchdown. So it took 13 seconds for the Red Raiders to respond and score. Well, we talked for seven minutes about Minnesota controlling the line of scrimmage with some of their size and strength, but this is the advantage that Texas Tech has. Probably the quickest, most explosive player on the roster, just 5'6 and 160 pounds. But you see Jakeem Grant, when he gets in that open field, there's not a Minnesota player that can catch him. And that was the first kick return for a touchdown in bowl history. You, know, you see it so many times in bowl games when you have a little bit of time off and get the extra practices still, but interim coaching staffs. Special teams sometimes the accordion, the thing that either shrinks or expands as a result. But what a big answer by the Red Raider Nation when we come back to Houston. Welcome back to the 2012 Meineke Car Care Bowl of Texas in Houston. It's the Minnesota Gophers taking on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Second meeting all time between these two teams under the roof here at Reliance Stadium. City of Texas aglow at night, and that was. Jakeem Grant, who just took back a 99-yard kickoff return for a score. Here's some of the key plays you missed a moment ago before you joined us. Derek Engel with the catch to set up a field goal by Minnesota on the opening drive after taking the opening kickoff. And then this a major response by Grant. 99 yards untouched, literally, into the end zone. There was a flag on the play, the penalty against the Gophers in a deflating moment for Minnesota Brock Yord after a pretty good start by them. And Grant is probably the most explosive Red Raider 97 yard kickoff return in their final game of the season against Baylor and Chris Thompson had to love that he didn't like the first seven minutes where Minnesota controlled the ball did what they wanted to do tonight established that run at the line of scrimmage hit the play pass to angle off of that. They contrast in styles tonight. Some of the size and the strength and the downhill run of Minnesota versus that explosive speed that Texas Tech has. Studemeyer. And Studemeyer takes it out to the 33 yard line, the all time leader in kickoff return yardage. Did that on the first kickoff return of the game. And Chris Thompson, you saw him right there on the sidelines a few moments ago, the interim head coach for Texas Tech. As Tommy Tuberville left for Cincinnati about three and a half weeks ago, Cliff Kingsbury subsequently hired former player at Texas Tech, and he's in attendance. He'll take over immediately after the game. And we were talking about the fact, Brock, that this is a pretty senior-laden team for the Red Raiders, and they have taken, own, taken ownership and stock and equity in their own well-being over the last couple of weeks during bowl practices. And now Kirkwood runs it. They've got a yard on the play. Brought down by Bush. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. The advantage that Chris Thompson has is the identity is set here in Lubbock, Texas, and he knows it. Senior quarterback, three senior offensive linemen, seniors abound at wide receiver. Have at his disposal next season, but as for these 60 minutes tonight, expect the Red Raiders to pitch it all across this field, throw it a bunch, that's what they do. He won't have Johnny football either. No, not even close. <laughs> Second down and nine. They fake the fly sweep again. Nelson, pretty slippery, makes a nice play. Rabe with the catch. And it's a first down for Minnesota. Nice gain of about 12 yards. A missed tackle by Darwin Bush on the play. That was an excellent play from the true freshman. Those are the kind of confidence builders you want to get. Nelson started the final six games of this season, has had the 15 practices throughout bowl season. And you'd love to see that. Jerry Kill loves to see a little play map making from his quarterback. They got very cool of it this season. There's the play action. 
Gets away from one tap there, heaves it. Incomplete. Second down and ten. And that's Frickty downfield. And one of the challenges Minnesota will have is Texas Tech is much faster on the back end of their defense. Don't expect to see a lot of separation unless they can run the ball as they did in that first drive and hit the play pass. This is a group that struggles with the plays down the field. Leading receiver A.J. Barker no longer with the team. So Frickty's actually the leading receiver coming into this night. And he's got 19 on the season. Kirkwood again, bouncing it outside, has a lot of real estate and runs over a couple of players inside the 30-yard line. A determined Danelle Kirkwood. <laughs> he runs right through Cody Davis. That's the definition of downhill, right? Well, this is the definition of a bowling ball that breaks. It's all about leverage. And Cody Davis, 351 career tackles, 48 consecutive starts on the back end of that defense. And Kirkwood says, you want no part of me at 5'9 and 220 pounds coming downhill. 26-yard gain on the play. Roderick Williams in the ballgame now. Subbing in for Kirkwood. Williams between the tackles. Another nice gain. All the way down to the 16-yard line before Cody Davis finally makes the stop. And those last two plays, a snapshot of what they really want to do, right? Right at you. No messing around, no perimeter, nothing horizontal. You go north and south when you've got a size and strength advantage. And if there was any game film that gave this Minnesota group that you said earlier, close out this season under Jerry Kill with six out of eight losses, they watched that Kansas game film. And Kansas ran for 390 against this group. And they did it with runs just like that, right at an undersized front seven. And here they go empty for the first time today, partner. Into the end zone, Fricky incomplete. And a flag thrown on the play. DJ Johnson, the all Big 12 performer, was in the area. I think he trying to defend Fricky. Pass interference on the defense, number 12. Ball be placed in the two yard line, automatic first down. And I think the senior got his hands out there, and anytime. Those back judges see that contact early. It doesn't Ooh. look like a lot, but wow. when you get your hands on a receiver, those back judges, those side judges, they're trained. That's what they're looking for. And did he impede that route in the course of the football? Well, that's a judgment call, but I believe that's the right call when you make contact at that receiver. Sets up a first and goal. From the two. Touchdown, Minnesota Williams. That's three carries out of that three back look and you have found immense success. This is exactly what Minnesota needed tonight. The run by Kirkwood earlier where he just plows through the senior safety Cody Davis and then coming right into your living room just downhill no nonsense football hitting him with a double dose of Big Ten style football rolling up your sleeves. And pounded away, ground and pound for the Gophers right now. And they now take a 10 to 7 lead. Kirkwood and Williams getting it done in the backfield. Minnesota back in the business of attending bowl games. ESPN College Football, the Meineke Car Care Bowl of Texas, is brought to you by Meineke Car Care Center. My money, my choice, my Meineke. Hyundai, go online and show your loyalty to your school at HyundaiShowYourLoyalty.com. And the Venture Card from Capital One. Earn double miles you can actually use. Hey, guys had a little fun this week, folks. The Rodeo Bowl organized by the Bowl staff. Seven events and a competition. Jessica Mendoza will be telling you more about that. In a little bit Minnesota for both Texas Tech and Texas Minnesota, Minnesota. Texas, baby. got a chance to test we those rodeo stuff. It's like that movie, what was that, City Slippers? Something like that? <laughs> right? And you may think the kids from Lubbock had an advantage over those from the Twin Cities. <laughs> I think you'll learn later it went the other way. <laughs> Team Grant ran back the last one, won't get a chance this time, takes a knee. Hey folks, the Rose Bowl on ESPN New Year's Day. 
Monte Ball leads the Badgers against the Cardinal in the granddaddy of them all. The Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio, the Wisconsin versus number six Stanford. Coverage beginning at 4.30 New Year's Day on ESPN and also on Watch ESPN. Monte Ball, we saw him against Penn State, and boy, he's got some got some skills. And if you've not seen Stephon Taylor there for Stanford as well, I chatted with Rod Gilmore, my colleague here at ESPN. He called him one of the most underrated players in college football, over 4,200 rushing yards. It's downhill football. You're getting right. a taste of it with Minnesota tonight. Well, no clash in style between those two. You know what you're going to get. I tell you what, when Harbaugh left Stanford, some thought whether Shaw would be able to continue the momentum there. No doubt about it right now, right? First down and 10. First play of the game for their offense. Davey completes it to the 27 yard line. Stoudemire making the stop on Ward. Stoudemire right there to make the stop. Ward leads the team in receiving with 974 yards. They go quick, as is what they do. This is Williams for first down. Derek Wells making the tackle on the play. Well, in the wake of Coach Tommy Tuberville leaving suddenly for Cincinnati, look what Dagey had to say. Yeah, I like that partner. You underlined the cogent part of that quote. Once we win this bowl. Exuding a lot of confidence. Even with interim head coach Chris Thompson on the sidelines. This is Stevens, a gaping hole. All the way down to the 40 yard line. They are shredding, eviscerating that front line of Minnesota. 21 yard gain. Well, this was a group that ran for more rushing yards than they had in the last 14 years. A little bit tighter splits than you're used to seeing out of Texas Tech. They get a helmet on a helmet. And Steven shows he's got some explosiveness as well. Dakey, another completion. This one to Ward again. Gain of about eight on the play. Temple, the name of the game for the Red Raiders, a flag down on the play, a late one. Ward, though, as I mentioned, the team lead, led the team in receiving yards, almost 1,000, 974. Moore is the other half of the two pronged attack, number 14. He actually had more receptions with 81. So they will sling it around a lot. Personal foul on the defense, number 21. Unnecessary roughness, 15 yard penalty, first down. Brock Vereen. Oof. Those are such tough calls because that an offensive player is going to the ground. And I know they're bang bang and they're instantaneous. Jerry Kill doesn't like it. I don't particularly like it either. As we get the advantage of replay, that may look like helmet to helmet on the field. I disagree, just like Jerry does with that call. First down and ten, and we've already had two personal fouls now. Brady keeps it himself and took a hit. He lost his hat. Somebody lost his hat. Yeah, it was Seth Dagey, the 6'1 senior, and he's going to have to come out, and he's all lamped up, too. He wants to give a little something. Not a, not a big zone read team, Texas Tech. He usually throws it. But shows he's willing to take a little punishment tonight in his finale with Texas Tech. Seth Dagey, his dad Randy was his high school coach. Michael Brewer now in the ball game for him for a play at least. Second down and five for the Red Raiders. They moved it down the field here on this their first offensive possession in some pretty big chunks. Of the ball resting at about the 13. Does Minnesota come after the new quarterback here? Maybe not. Didn't matter. Touchdown, Texas Tech. They did that quickly. Derek Edwards with the catch and the score. Seth Dagey say hey hold on a second freshman that's supposed to be my touchdown and Texas Tech showing you some offensive balance that's going to be very challenging for the Golden Gophers tonight if they can run Head it ball. that way personal foul number 72 on the offense that penalty will be assessed on the kickoff 
Wow, Double play another one. Touchdown. That's the left guard. That's Bo Carpenter. That's now three personal fouls, and I think this officiating crew from the MAC is making it very clear to these players: no extracurricular activity is going to be tolerated. And I was saying earlier, Chris Thompson has to love that kind of balance. Minnesota is going to try to play two safeties to protect against that pass, and Texas Tech can gash him in the run that way. You're looking at a lot of points tonight for the Red Raiders. Well, you just said it, partner. Texas Tech with the extra point to follow here. Ryan Buston. Up and good, and it's 14 to 10, 24 points, and we haven't even gotten through the first period of play. What does it tell you? It tells you that deep in the heart of Texas, folks, it may not be worth being a defensive coordinator tonight. You feel me? Back with more on the other side. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN Live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. It's Houston all lit up tonight for the Monarchy Car Care Bowl of Texas. 14-10, high-scoring game and uh, emotional players down on the field for the Gophers. Right, Jessica? Yes, Mark. This is a very close Minnesota team because of their teammate Gary Tinsley. He was a senior last year, and this year on April 6, he passed away. They honor him with a GT51 patch on the front of their jerseys. Before every game, they choose one player to wear that 51. For tonight, it's Keenan Cooper, who was his roommate and the player who found him on that morning of April 6. I spoke to Keenan before the game of what it meant to wear that 51. And he said it represents and honors the type of player that Gary Tinsley was. He's a hard worker, great loyal teammate, and incredibly competitive. In fact, he said that every player that's worn his jersey this year has had a season-high game because they feel like a part of Gary is with them. He told me right before the game, hey, putting this jersey on, I can't lose. Great way to honor the memory of a guy that made a good contribution to the program. And I saw Minnesota twice last year call two of Gary Tinsley's games. You're talking about an overachiever. The guy that got everything out of his ability, the second leading tackler last year for Minnesota. The Raiders took off from the 20 because of the personal foul. So Minnesota looking at some good starting field position and a nice return again. Studebaugh into Texas Tech territory at about the 48-yard line, a 36-yard return, and, well, now you really got to say that that personal foul helped out. But still a great return by Studemeyer. so the Gophers and Philip Nelson would move the ball very well so far. Another chance here with under four minutes to go here in the first quarter. And now we get our first look at Marquise Gray. At quarterback. He was the starter for Minnesota the first three games of the season before getting injured. And they moved him to wide receiver. What a feeling we'd see both quarterbacks today. Kirkwood in the backfield, dotting the eye. This is Kirkwood. In about six to the 42 yard line. It's blocked by Zach Epping up front. And I think you're going to see a very similar game plan for both quarterbacks. That's what Minnesota talked about this week, a game plan that really favors both Nelson and Gray. Lots of run, the play pass off of it. Nelson's been successful here in this first quarter. This is no surprise. This was planned. They were going to get Gray some series. And you're going to get to see at 6'5", 250, the most explosive player on this roster for Minnesota. Right back to that three-back look. And it up again, Kirkwood. Under the 37 yard line, picked up enough for the first down. Got four. Johnson making the stop on the play. They've had actually three different starters this year. One of eight teams this year with three or more starting quarterbacks. And you can see the win loss there. That usually spells complete disaster, as it did for many of those programs this season. Wisconsin, Minnesota, the only two making a bowl and becoming bowl eligible, living through three different quarterbacks. The third one in the mix, Matt Shortell, recently transferring to Minnesota. There's a play action, pass complete to the tight end, down to the 30, that's John Rabe. 
and an eight yard gain so Marquise Gray completes his first pass attempt and I got to be honest with you not seeing this three back look for Minnesota on game film this season and that's the advantage of 15 bowl practices gives you a chance and Jerry kill loves it like an extra spring practice gives you an opportunity to really match up your personnel in a way that best fits against that opponent and very clear tonight favorable for Minnesota at the point of attack especially with the big fellas going downhill second down and two but again going to be close to that first down not sure that he made it let's see what kind of spot he gets looks like they're going to give him enough for the first down hey you talk about that formation in the backfield and the 15 extra practices to put it in how tough does that make it for the defense to scout your opponent now oh it makes it very tough and this is where your adjustments come into play for Art Kaufman, the defensive coordinator for Texas Tech, what is Jerry Kill going to do next? What's the next formation and the next wrinkle? And I think you can see here very clearly that Texas Tech defensive coordinator and his staff should realize this is no nonsense. This is Stanford. This is multiple formations, multiple ways to run that power run right at us. Put the emotion, but it's great that keeps it. And if I'm Minnesota, it, it, it's a fine line you walk because you're loving this tempo right now mm -hmm. But this play clock right here becomes my friend If I'm quarterback in this group this offense knowing what's on the other side and knowing and watching their explosiveness Maximize that play clock run it down Limit just the number of touches and possessions and plays for an up-tempo offense that desperately wants to get on that field Second and six, Williams in the backfield. Gray's going to take off. That's that added dimension that he gives. He makes it down to about the 15 and picks up another Minnesota first down. Got eight on that one. He's the second leading rusher on the team. A unique story. He's one of the married players on the team. Has a, a couple of twin boys. Had also made the trip with him here with his wife and played quarterback first three games. Missed the next two with an injury. Return versus Northwestern and played quarterback and wide receiver and then played wide receiver exclusively until November the 17th against Nebraska and then played both in the final game of the year. He has been all over the field for the Gophers in a productive way. Williams breaks a couple of tackles. Brock, is, is that an example of some of the size edge and the that they have right there running <laughs> well, through both, guys yeah both of these running backs are low to the ground they are built for this kind of system and how about 24 plays for Minnesota to just six for Texas Tech you can't script it any better the Gophers deep in the heart of Texas down by four but making a move encroaching on the Ra Raider Nation in the shadows of their goal line when we come back for the second Welcome back, everyone, to Reliance Stadium, the Meineke Car Care Bowl of Texas, Minnesota, trailing Texas Tech. As we begin the second quarter of play, Mark Jones chopping it up with Brock Hewer, Just Mendoza down in the field, and Minnesota threatening here. And just inside the 10 yard line, second and four. Marquise Gray in on his first series. And got enough for the first down and then some. There you see some of that 250 pounds able to move the pile a little bit. And you also see a level of patience there from Gray that you've seen from the running backs. And this is the physical math mismatch. That's Sam McGuava, number 13. He's six foot, 215 pounds. On the other side, Mike Alway, 18th, 205. This is an undersized group built. For what? They're built for the Big 12, for all the spread and all the pass and all the basketball on grass you see in that conference. And here's an opportunity for the big boys from the north, from the Big 10, to bring the big uglies and run right at them. A timeout called by Minnesota. First and goal coming up. And uh, Brock, I ask you, Marquise Gray has a little bit more 
but we'll 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 we'll, we'll, we'll talk about Marquise Gray now. Uh, how tough is it to switch gears coming in, receiver, quarterback, quarterback, receiver, back and forth? Well, he came in, Mark, as a wide receiver. And then he thought with Jerry Kill that he could really be that dual threat quarterback. And I think Jerry did as well. And unfortunately was derailed, as you said earlier, by some injuries. But you're talking about a kid that's thrown for 2,000 yards, that's ran for over 1,600 yards, has 766 yards receiving. It's why the NFL likes him and is intrigued by him and why he'll be in an NFL camp next year, not as a quarterback, but as a six foot five inch, 250 pound athlete that you're seeing tonight can really use that size and strength. This three back look, it's been heavy, heavy run. Run it again. Touchdown, Minnesota Kirkwood. There's an old philosophy. In fact, an old coordinator of mine, Tom Moore, for the Indianapolis Colts, said, I'm going to run it until you prove to me that you can stop it. And right now, that power run game with the big boys, the tight end and fullback in the backfield, they're targeting, they're pushing that pile, and they found immense success here early with that three-back formation. Danelle Kirkwood, Kirkwood, the sixth rushing touchdown of the season, the ninth of his career. Minnesota now with a 17-14 lead. Marquise Gray successful on his first drive at quarterback. One, one last request I have with Kirby is I was going to see if there's any way possible we could get Cincinnati on the schedule next year. I was surprised. You know, I was in New York for the Heisman, and uh, just surprised that that happened. Uh, then things started happening, and ended up here. What was your conversation like with Johnny Manziel, and how quick are you going to be able to get him here to Tech? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a once in a lifetime type player, and um, was just thrilled and honored to be able to work with him. And, and he's fired up for me in this opportunity, so uh, you know, it all worked out. What are you going to be looking for in watching this game tonight? You know, really just taking it all in. It's great to see all the Tech fans and a really great atmosphere here and um, a lot of talent on both sides of the ball, so kind of just taking it in the ball game. What do you feel like are going to be the key factors to be successful here at Tech? You know, just like every other coach, uh, continue to get better on special teams, take care of the football, and uh, continue to recruit Texas really heavily. There's a bunch of great players in the state. You've got to keep getting those. Along with great players come great coaching. Have you given any thought to who your coaches are going to be? Still working on that. Hired a few guys. A lot of guys still have bowl games going on. So we'll get that going after the bowl season and really try to wrap it up. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks a lot, Jessica. And uh, Brock, I ask you, uh, Texas Tech offensively, last few years really since the Leacher, uh, pitch and catch. They threw, sling it around a lot. Uh, Cliff Kingsbury's philosophy along those lines are a little bit different. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, he is that him for, by nature? Is that the way he's yeah, going to fit yeah. in here? I think so. He threw for over 12,000 yards at this school, and it's in the DNA. It's the identity. It's what they do well. Now, can he add a level of balance? That's what the athletic director wants out of him. And, and I think he, he did so at Texas A&M with a very special player in a Johnny Manziel. But I, I think more than anything, what stands out to me, is he gets it he's from there he knows that you could see the level of excitement from that fan base that one of their own was coming back to lead this program first and ten Dagey completes the pass to Darren Moore that's going to be Moore's first catch of the night and he's their leading receiver with 81 catches on the year nice target at 6'4 216 pounds a senior second and one coming up Receiver screens to the other side to Ward. Ward has the first down to the 43. And the tempo game continues on the gain of nine. Watch how quickly the ball gets out of Seth Dagey's hands. One of the quicker releases in college football. He knows his system inside and out. Cliff Kingsbury would sure love to have him next season. About 8,000 yards of success as a passer here. 24 consecutive starts. Very decisive. Coming into the game, Dakey needed just 66 yards to reach 4,000 for his career. This is Williams, and Williams in a nice game of about nine. 
Brock Vereen making the stop. It's going to be very hard for Minnesota to contain this offense if you can't take one dimension away. When Texas Tech has struggled, it's been when they've had to become one dimensional. Right now, this veteran offensive line, much like Minnesota on the other side, getting great push at the point of attack. Hagee, incomplete, broken up nicely. And second down coming up. You know, this is a good matchup between the number two passing offense in the country, Brock, of Texas Tech and one of the top pass defenses in the nation for Minnesota. And there you see the level of anticipation, and that's what makes this offense go. It's not necessarily just the routes as they're drawn. It's Daggy seen and anticipating because he knows exactly how the defense is trying to attack him. Getting that ball out early. And here's a little wildcat look for the Red Raiders. Third and two. Stevens going to take the direct snap here. And he hands it off to Ward. And Ward picks up the first down. A little press to digitation, a little trickery there. And a six yard gain on the play. So you what, they got an extensive playbook, partner. They do. And Sonny Cumbie, I think worth pointing out tonight, calling plays for the first time in his career. It looks like he's going to remain. Good friends with Cliff Kingsbury remain on this staff. But the former Tech quarterback in the shot tonight with offensive coordinator Neil Brown, who has also, like Tupperville, departed Neil to Kentucky. On first and ten. Baby dumps it off to Stevens. Stevens breaking a couple of tackles and finally stopped. Just a little shy of the 35, picked up eight on the play. So we've seen Wildcat, we've seen zone run, we've seen end around, we've seen <laughs> seam routes and quick hitches. Just a whole slew of offense and doing it at a rapid pace. Second down and two. This is Williams. First down and then some inside the 30. You know, in the wake of Tommy Tubbleville's departure, a lot of the seniors especially talked about hey you know we're going to do this for us and Chris Thompson was complimenting the leadership on this team saying basically hey they're running practices as much as we are and it shows with the efficiency that they executed with tonight into the end zone touchdown what a catch oh now incomplete they're saying it hit the bottom Darren Moore couldn't hang on Studemeyer defending on the play Appeared to have it, and then, oh, it slipped out. And you don't get that very often. Darren Moore, 13 touchdown receptions just like that. He will body up those defensive backs. He wants the catch, but you've got to complete and that completion all the way through contact with the ground, and he did not. And that's a rarity. He usually comes down and makes that play. Instead, it's second down and 10. The guy gets rid of it complete. That's Moore. Moore picks up about seven. From the 20. I love that. They get up to the line of scrimmage. They want to see Minnesota, whether or not they're going to show that. How does Minnesota slow them down here? <laughs> Even a little. Good luck. Tenth play of the drive. Juggled and caught at the 11 yard line by Darren Moore. Not to laugh off your question, but what they're going to have to do throughout the course of this game is what I said earlier take one dimension away. Because if you don't, and you're just playing zone coverage like that, these quarter, this quarterback and receivers are just simply too experienced getting into those zones and taking advantage of the boards. Flag thrown, and looks like we've got pass interference against Michael Carter. He was matched up against Ward. That's going to be an interesting matchup. Number 23, ball in place to the two-yard line, first down. That's their best cover corner, Brock, going against one of their best receivers for Texas Tech. And even though you're undersized, and this is where it gets difficult, even though you're undersized, you've got to trust your skill set. You've got to get back and play the ball. Anytime you have that amount of contact and you're blind to the ball, that is a very easy call for the referee. 
These are two seniors outside. They are undersized, and that's what makes it difficult. But trust your skill set, trust your experience and your talent. Turn around, find that ball, and you can avoid that penalty. Sets up a first and goal from the two. They go quick on it. And touchdown. Oh, no, they're going to whistle it. Jakeem Grant's knee was down. Looked like the old fumble ruski. <laughs> Hey, well, they have opened up the whole box of tricks here. Well, we showed Sonny Cumbie earlier on the sidelines, and he told me, you know, I've always got to be thinking one play ahead. Does the knee touch there or the elbow? The forearm is yeah. down. Yeah, that is a good call. <laughs> Seen it right away. Drawn up wow. well, just not fully executed. Let's sleep on Texas Tech tonight. Second and goal. Back at the five. That's 14 at the bottom. And now a flag thrown. Procedure going to go against Texas Tech. Ball start on the offense for 72. Five yard penalty until second down. That's the second penalty. We had a personal foul earlier there. The sophomore Bo Carpenter. Chris Thompson, the offensive line coach, elevated to the interim head coaching position tonight. But anytime you typically get this one on one coverage down at the bottom of the screen to your big receiver, Darren Moore, six foot four, Deggy likes it. Second and goal. Complete to Williams. And stopped up just shy of the end zone at about the one by Wells. Third and goal coming up. The whole key with that throw, you see, he allowed his running back to keep his eyes up. There was no even thought of the reception. It's so automatic. The repetitions are there. He hits him in stride. The offense, number 65, 15-yard wow. penalty. The down counts, third down. That was the th third personal foul now we've seen. Pardon me, unsportsmanlike. And that's going to be the senior, Gallington. I'm not sure where that one came from. And this one hurts. Top left, top left side of your screen. Oh, he looked like he threw a hand to the helmet, a, threw a punch almost. All the way back at the 16 now. Third and goal. Maybe complete. Williams. Pardon me. Foster. And he's going to be stopped way short. This thing didn't quite turn out right for Texas Tech. Fourth and goal coming up. It all started with that trick play when Jakeem Grant touched his forearm down. And it was backwards after that. Five penalties already tonight, but 63 costly yards. We've seen it on kickoffs. That takes them away from the goal line. A group that has struggled with penalties average over 70 yards a game tonight. So this isn't as if it's just the interim coach that's in tonight and they're losing control. And the problem for Texas Tech this season. Field goal coming from 28 yards out. And another flag. Well, Texas Tech. Texas Tech calls They're a timeout first. first. All right, so they get the timeout. And what started off is a pretty good uh, looking drive. Uh, we have a field goal attempt now here for Texas Tech. Brock, as a player, what do you think really is uh, un underneath some of the bold statements about being together and fighting through and, uh, you know, uh, taking, you know, taking umbrage with Tommy Tuberville leaving? What's on the what's the pulse of this Texas Tech team? Well, I think when you get to this moment now, it's just about playing ball. And, and this is where it is a real advantage for Texas Tech that as you've talked about through this first half, this is a senior laden group. The identity is in place. They know who they are. They know what they want to do. And you're seeing that in some of their offensive execution tonight. And you're also seeing an emotional group. I said earlier, this is not uncharacteristic. They have struggled with penalties, but not quite like this. 63 yards already. Three penalties, a couple of them after the whistle. 
And you heard Cliff Kingsbury when he was talking to our own Jessica Mendoza saying, you know, it's just typical football stuff that I'm looking for, and I know what I've got to clean up in order to take this program to the next level. Ryan Dustin attempting this one for the 28, and he knocks it through. Tied at 17 here under the lights at Reliance Stadium with 8.36 to go in the first half. Let's take a look back with our Buick Drive recap and the Minnesota Gophers executing their game plan with precision. Running the ball between the tackles and on the edges and pounding away at that rather undersized defense of Texas Tech. Right now resulting in 17 points on the board. Williams and Kirkwood doing a nice job on the ground running the ball. Kirkwood with 56 yards rushing to lead the way. Williams with 22. And I think pretty clear what they want to do coming in with this plan. And remember, this is the 97th ranked scoring offense in America. Just 21 points a game in a Big Ten that was down across the board. So to see this kind of execution tonight, Jerry Kill has got to like what he's done in his 15 bowl practices leading up to this evening and just a perfect venue for football, mm. isn't it? Both teams have scored on each possession every time they've touched the ball. A lot of red in the stands here. You mentioned the venue. A lot of uh, Red Raider Nation showing up. Not that far trip from Lubbock. This one will dribble out of the back of the end zone. Hey, Capital One Bowl Week rolls on New Year's Eve with three games at noon. It's NC State Vanderbilt in the Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl. Then at 3.30, they will be taking doing the uh, Tulsa-Iowa State game in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl in Memphis. And at 7.30, Les Miles and number 8 LSU square off against Taj Boyd, number 14 Clemson in the Chick-fil-A Bowl. Capital One Bowl Week, Monday on ESPN, also live on Watch ESPN. Taj Boyd, uh, one of the more uh, dynamic quarterbacks in the country. Fun to watch every time he touches the ball. First down and 10. But I'm going to take you for a nice meal down on Beale Street for that other zone Liberty Bowl. And I got some catfish for you. As Roderick Williams gains about a yard on the play. Well, that was the first time that Texas Tech actually had an answer for that three back look. And what it was was darts Juan Bush, the defensive end there, finally getting off a block. This Minnesota offensive line has done such a nice job on the front side. That's where the play is going, getting a helmet on a helmet and getting those blockers out in front and pushing the pile. And that time, the Tech defensive line finally makes a play. And second down and nine. He's Gray still in the quarterback, hands it off. That was Williams. And sets up a third and about three. You know what? We've had a little extracurricular activities after the whistle. And, you know, sometimes you wonder whether teams really are motivated to play in some of these ball games, Brock. I don't think there's any doubt that these players are amped up and ready to go here tonight. And it's like two days. You're ready to hit somebody else. Been yeah. physical camps, especially for Minnesota. You also got to handle your emotions in a game that's been called pretty tightly tonight. Third and three. There's the play action. Great with all day. And he can do it with his legs, which he does. Another first down. Out at the 39. Let's go downstairs to Jessica. Well, Mark, you guys talking about the motion of this game. I spoke with Chris Thompson yesterday, and he told me that the team that usually wins this, these bowl games is the team that's the most excited, the most passionate. He said, I want my guys to be that team. I want them to be fired up. I want them to be ready and getting after it. The thing is, guys, is it isn't just one team. He thought it usually is, but both of these sidelines are equally excited and passionate. And you know, for a lot of these players, it's it's not all about going on to the NFL. This is their last game. They may never play another football game. Ray hands it off, and Williams that time with nowhere to go. Stopped up in the middle. And Delvon Simmons there to make the stop. Number eight. Gain of about one on the play. Second down and nine. A little better job. Some conversation there amidst some of the passion and emotion. I promise you, Art Kaufman, with his defensive players, that you have got to win on those blocks. You want to stop this downhill run? This defensive line just can't be locked up one on one. Allow those free runners and those free pullers to get to the second level. Better job at the line of scrimmage and the point of attack. Great 
pass. And he's going to take off and gets another first down. Now they're going to mark it just a little bit shy. About a yard short, got about eight. How much of a difference do you think he's made since coming in for Philip Nelson? I mean, the game plan seems to be the same, though, isn't it? It is. He's just such a stud at 250 pounds breaking tackles. He's going to keep it himself and get the first down for Minnesota on third down and one. And it's nice to see him healthy. And that's been part of the challenge and was a real challenge for them this season. They didn't want to play three quarterbacks, and I think in an ideal world would have loved to have redshirted Philip Nelson, but instead, Gray bangs up the ankle earlier in the season. They go to Shortell, he struggles. Gray, really, that ankle injury lingered all season long, and tonight you're seeing him when he is fresh and at his best, he is a load. Minnesota with six wins on the year. That's three better than a season ago when they were three and nine. And Gray this time sacked back to the 42 yard line. Bush making the sack on the play for Texas Tech. And that's unfortunate there. I like the call for Matt Limegrover to be aggressive. You move the chains a couple times, but there you would love to see your senior quarterback just throw that ball away. He had plenty of time. Texas Tech did not bite on the play pass. The receiver on the post route, triple covered. Just find a way to throw that one down the field away. And avoid that big seven yard loss because this is not where Minnesota's at its best behind the chains. Second down and 17. It's a big challenge for the Gophers today is being able to throw it downfield in large chunks and get the big shots downfield. Wesley is going to be called for offside. On the defense, number 96. Five yard penalty till second down. I have no <laughs> explanation whatsoever. <laughs> Not hard to see the football right in front of your face. Yeah. Uh, Epping the center at least stuck the landing. <laughs> Second down and 12 coming up. Big hole for Kirkwood. And another Minnesota first down at the 34-yard line. That time a gain of 18, and the riddle continues to be unsolved. And another after the whistle flag thrown, and the players just can't turn it off. Players having a hard time controlling their emotions after the play. There's two fouls on the play. We have an illegal block on the offense number 81. The dead ball, personal foul on the offense number 52. Both those fouls will be enforced. Second down. Boy, Coach Kill incensed. And you're going to see it right down here. All the extracurricular activity we saw earlier tonight. The last guy to throw that punch is going to get the call. That was Zach Epi, number 52, coming in. Wow. Look where this is going to go back to. Back to the 18 yard line. Two of them. It was John Rabe 81. It was Epping 52. And this is where, as a player, you have got to understand this has been consistent from the beginning here. They're not going to let you get away with anything. And Jerry Kill may not like it, but when he sees the replay of that, that that's the correct call. You can't lay your hands and hit somebody after the whistle. Wow, it is second and Galveston, Texas to go. And they got back about three of that 42. Third and 39, and another flag thrown. This is starting to get out of control. As much as the officials are trying to rein in some of the misguided emotions, 
so far. The players once again after the added play, after the whistle. Personal foul on the offense number 52. After this is going to go, the down counts. The third down. I think Jerry Kill. What does Jerry Kill do? Does he pull effing, effing uh, out of the uh, game? Yeah, I think you're going to have to do that at this point. You know, I always ask these coaches, who's the big nasty? Who's the guy that bends the face masks? And they pointed to Zach Epping. He's their nasty guy. In fact, Lime Grover, Matt Lime Grover, offensive coordinator, called him our nasty, grumpy old man. But it's just after the whistle. I mean, it's just uncalled for. You're already going to be targeted. You already know, not target, that's not the right word. You already know this is coming. You cannot yeah. get away with that. And what are you doing to your team? You're putting them now in a third and impossible situation. Do you like the toughness? Do you like the edge? Sure you do. But you can't do it after the whistle. It's got to be controlled. Third down and Beaumont, Texas to go. You've only got to get to the 39 on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> and a quarterback draw. Nowhere to go. Boy, it looked like a promising drive about four plays ago. Now will result, result in a punt. And Zach Epping at the center of it all. It's going to be the first punt for either team today. Fourth and 49 coming up. This game got a little bit more interesting. It's the first time that either team hadn't scored on offense. Chris Eldridge to punt. Timeout, Minnesota. And Minnesota's going to call a timeout. Zach Epping going to. Somebody needs to throw some water on him. Cool that boy down a little bit. <laughs> With more after this. ESPN College Football, the Meineke Car Care Bowl of Texas, is brought to you by the Experience Buick Lease. It's a new lease on luxury. Progressive, making it easy to buy car insurance. And Taco Bell, sometimes you got to live Moss. I spoke with Minnesota linebacker Mike Rollis, and he told me one of his favorite takeaways from this entire season is going to be the Rodeo Bowl. This is Tech this week, this year in Houston. He told me they had horse stick racing, a 10 cap pin where they had to grab the ribbon, chalk branding, even a dance contest where their O lineman Tommy Olson surprised and impressed them. Guys, they had so much fun, and they outscored Texas Tech 5 to 2. Like they're doing a little uh, cattle rushing there, uh, trying to rope that calf or tackle the calf. Remind me of that City Slippers movie still. Here's the punt. Uh, not a great effort by Elgin. Going to bounce out of bounds on Minnesota side of midfield. At about the 42 yard line, so the Red Raiders will have good field position when we come back. Capital One Bowl Week is available live anytime, anywhere on your computer, tablet, or smartphone at WatchESPN.com and with the Watch ESPN app. A great device to have on your iPhone or your iPad, iTouch, laptop. Great for the guy on the move. First down and 10. Good starting field position for the Red Raiders. Peggy out of the shotgun. Complete to the 45 to Williams. Back to Reese. Reese, season's greetings, my man. And likewise to you, Mark, coming up on the aptly named Reese's Halftime Report. We'll show you how a new wave bow nose touchdown in independent style. We'll have a top 10 list as we look ahead to Notre Dame and Alabama, now just 10 days away. And also a peek ahead to the new era pinstripe bowl, West Virginia and Syracuse. All right, Reese, that's an inside handoff to Foster. And on the previous play, the completion by Dagey put him over 4,000 yards passing on his career. Just the second Texas Tech quarterback to do so. On the season, pardon me. Third and four coming up. Pass complete to Moore. And Moore 
Ran a nice route. Brock got the first down working against Michael Carter. And Mike. Diggy is just so good when you see that blitz and defense coordinator Tracy Clay said it's going to be a hard game to blitz and try to get after the quarterback outside of that zone read run that he kept earlier. Diggy's not been hit because he sees it. He recognizes it and that ball is out of his hands so quickly. Down Diggy again, misfiring this time. Thompson in on the coverage. Been doing it with a 70% completion rate, 68 touchdowns to just 24 interceptions in his career. Solid decision maker, great leader, resilient, tough, everything you want in your quarterback. Second and 10, they run it this time. And that's Foster gaining about four on the play. Let's go back to Daigie a little bit. You saw the prolific numbers. People use the argument is it the quarterback or is it the system? Where do you stand on that kind of stuff? Well, it's a system, but you got to have it between your ears in this system to play at this kind of level. And you also got to be very accurate, which he is. Third and six. And complete throw it away that time. Wisely. Fourth down. Good pressure up front by Wilhite. Wilhite leads the Gophers in sacks, has eight and a half coming into the ball game. Fourth down coming up. Uh, do you even think about going for it here, or is this a field goal coming? Well, this is one of those game management conversations that Chris Thompson is going to have, and I like the fact that he calls a timeout. He's thinking about it. For me, I get those points on the board. Interim head coach Chris Thompson on the sidelines leading Texas Tech in this bowl game after Tommy Tuberville left for Cincinnati. Cliff Kingsbury has been named the new head coach. But Thompson, the interim head coach, and uh, how does this dynamic work now that you have a, a new guy calling the shots? Something that he's new and doing. Well, it's a group conversation, number one. Number two, you're seeing Sonny Cumbie there. And by that amount of communication, uh, you're going to go for it here. I'd get the three points. I'd like to go in with a halftime lead. Knowing that Jerry Kill in his two years in Minnesota is 0-15 when his team trails wow. at halftime. The Coach Thompson, this is where he's going to trust Sonny Cumbie as offensive coordinator. How much of a difference does it make in your decision making knowing that you may not be there next year in that same role? I think it can. I think we saw that take place with Lance Gidry at Western Kentucky a couple games ago, didn't we, in this bowl season right. just a few days ago, going for it on a fourth and two. And I think the smart play with a minute to go is to get those points and force an overtime situation. This is a little different. This is an offensive line coach, now the interim head coach, looking at his play caller, which happens to be Sonny Cumbie tonight, who's called a really good game. And also looking at an offense, Mark, in this first half that, that's had their way, been able to run it and throw it pretty successfully. Let's look at uh, Kingsbury. Going to take over immediately following the game. and. Uh, how difficult is it for him coming in as a new head coach catching up on recruiting at this time of year? I mean you see it all the time and they've got to come up with some kind of new rule where coaches aren't allowed to move. There's got to be something yeah. involved though during this time of the year. It is difficult, but remember two things. Number one, he's been in Texas A&M. He's in state. Number two, most of the folks that he's recruiting in Texas, they've got some familiarity with that Kingsbury right. name. Fourth and six are going to go for it. Daigie, a little heat coming. Squeezes it in the window, complete. And the 17 yard line to Tyson Williams. First and 10. Another minute to go now in the first half. This is where your advantage of a no huddle, up tempo offense. He got the timeout. No need to panic or rush. This is how you play anyway. Daigie completes it again. Williams. Inside the 10 to the 9. Texas Tech with just one timeout remaining. Second and two. Whistle and they're going to call a timeout. Actually, Minnesota calls timeout. We're going to take them with them. Back after this. Texas Tech is on the rise. 
Now a national research university, a growing campus steeped in tradition. Seven straight semesters of record enrollment. Wind research that's unrivaled in the world. The best trained and educated students for today's jobs. And to all this, we have just one thing to say. With pride, guns up. Second and two coming up, 24 seconds to go, and now Minnesota out of timeouts. Texas Tech with one. How many shots, how do you manage the time here if you're the Red Raiders? Every play at your disposal right here just gets you your best stuff. You've got that timeout in your pocket, and as I said, such an advantage in these moments that you play at a frenetic pace anyway. One more at the bottom of the screen in a one-on-one. -on -one. Number 14, look the other way in the slot, incomplete. Broken up nicely on the play by the safety, Brock Vereen. It'll be third down and two coming up. It was intended for Zuzalik. And I'm a little surprised he's not gone to his big wideout, Darren Moore. Six foot four inch target down there. You see him matched up with number two, Sudemeyer. He's just five foot nine. Typically, that's a matchup when he gets one on one that Davey loves to feast upon. 13 touchdowns already this season, third and two. Maybe gets rid of it quickly, complete. Moore made the catch, but they contained him at about the six-yard line. Studemeyer there to make the stop first and goal, though. I'm spiking. Time up. winding down. 15 seconds, they're going to stop the clock with 13 to go. Now 12 and one timeout remaining. That is heady stuff of a fifth-year senior, and the offensive line coach likes to see that. Wasted no time. And you'd be surprised how many times in college football you get in those moments. The clock stops. Get everybody organized. Get up there and spike it. You save that time out. So once again, you don't have to necessarily throw this into the end zone. Let your playmakers make something happen with that timeout in hand. Look at 12 seconds. What do you have, two plays here? Yep. Time winding down in the play clock. We've got to get to work here. Dagey. Going to take off. Leaping touchdown. <laughs> Seth Dagey. Couldn't find a receiver. Blew a tire, lost a shoe, <laughs> and still scored. Pretty good time management by the Red Raiders, wouldn't you say? Five seconds to go, and they go up by seven. Sonny Cumbie likes it. He loved the experience of a fifth-year senior that never panics. They try to run a rub route underneath. You can see the crossing routes. Good pressure by Minnesota. Does the veteran panic? Does he freak out? No. He knows to get north and south, and this isn't his M.O. He throws for 38 touchdowns, but he gets his second rushing touchdown of the season. He, he tried to lift off. There wasn't much lift, but he kept moving forward. Daigie, that's his second rushing touchdown of the season and only the sixth of his career. And so often, that's where experience comes into play. You'll see young quarterbacks, oh no, I called this play, it's supposed to look like this, I got pressure, and they'll just panic. And he doesn't, he trusts his instincts, he's played a ton of ball over his five years. I said earlier, how about resiliency? Two torn ACLs in high school yeah. be ever, before he ever got to Lubbock. He red shirts, he plays very little his first two years. And over the last two years, he's been incredibly efficient. Yeah, Torres ACL in his senior year of high school. Missed his entire last season of high school, but uh, then coach Mike Leach honored their commitment. And Daigie paying off big time with 38 touchdown passes. That was another one. Actually, uh, it was a run, but he had 38 coming into the game. Sometimes strange things happen on kickoff returns. Studemeyer finally brought down, and that's the end. 
of the first half of play. A high scoring first quarter. Things slowing down a little bit in the second period. But Seth Dagey leading his team to a 24 17 lead as we go downstairs to Jessica. Jess? Coach, some chippiness, a little bit of emotion, and some penalties because of it. What do you tell your team at the half to be able to minimize some of that? They just got to play smarter. I mean, there's a lot of. I mean, Minnesota's playing hard. Our guys are playing hard, but they got to play smart. So uh, we just got to talk about that at halftime, get that cleaned up. And also, how do you, what do you tell your team at half to kind of slow down their running game? Well, Coach Kaufman did a great job making some adjustments there on the last drive. Uh, we, we've got we made some adjustments there, and we got to keep doing that. Our guys got to come up and tackle those backs. And I said it before the game, Minnesota's got some big, strong backs, and they're doing a great job. So our guys got to come up, fit, and tackle. All right, thanks a lot. Coach. Thank you. All right, thanks a lot, Jessica. Our score at halftime, 24 to 17. We're going to go to the studio for the Reese's halftime report with Reese. Hey, Reese, they're doing some uh, some jaw jacking down here in Texas. Welcome back to the 2012 Meineke Car Care Bowl of Texas in Houston. Minnesota Gophers taking on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. The second meeting all time between these two teams. Texas Tech and Minnesota played to an overtime contest several years ago before the Red Raiders finally won out in the end. Mark Jones chopping it up alongside Brock Heward. Jessica Mendoza down to the sidelines joining us shortly. Brock, we saw Texas Tech score each and every time they touched the ball in the first half. Minnesota's offensive attack a little bit different. How important is it for Minnesota to get on the board here early in the oh, second half? Oh, it's critical, Mark. There's no doubt about it. We talked early in this game about the clash of styles. That's exactly what it's been. I didn't think it'd be quite to this extent where Minnesota is six runs to every pass and Texas Tech two passes to every run. And it's going to be critical that Minnesota can't fall behind two scores. It's wonderful to have that style and, and be smash mouth and downhill, but you better be careful about getting down 14 when you're not built to come from behind. Let's take a look at tonight's game track brought to you by Belk. And uh, Minnesota running the ball early and often just pounding away. And this kickoff return of 99 yards by Jakeem Grant, the longest play in bowl history. That made it a tie game. Actually, that put Texas Tech ahead without their offense even getting onto the field. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable to look at the stats. And if I were to have told Matt Limegrover, the offensive coordinator of Minnesota, Jerry Kill, the head coach, that you'd possess the ball for almost 20 minutes, you'd run it 30 times, you'd score 17 points, he would take it. But as you said, they have not stopped Texas Tech once the kickoff return touchdown, the two other touchdowns the field goal you've got to find a way here coming out of halftime to avoid that big hole and Raiders are get possession this is Grant who ran one back 99 yards earlier and seeing a little bit too fast for his own feet stopped up at the 19 yard line and let's take a look at our first half stats brought to you by five hour energy Look at that almost two to one time of possession right there. No turnovers, but plenty of penalties. Been a very chippy first half. Texas Tech has uh, made do of uh, and accounted for each of those 10 minutes and 11 seconds that they've touched the ball, putting 24 points on the board. I feel like Minnesota's got to force a takeaway, don't you? Minus 12 on the season was Texas Tech, one of the worst in college football. Minnesota athletically a hard time matching up outside the great neutralizers can get that takeaway. And 10 from the 19. They're going to run it. This is Williams. And Williams gains about six and a little bit on the play. Give him seven. It'll be second and three. Minnesota played Northwestern and Syracuse, which were kind of similar to Texas Tech. So let's see if they can solve this. And of course, we talked about their record when trailing at half. It doesn't bode well for the final result for the Gophers. And there was almost the interception that they were looking for and the takeaway. Michael Carter seemed like he had it in his hands and dropped it. And that is a play that you have got to make if you're Michael Carter. A nice job there by Texas Tech coming back. Tyson Williams, a senior, in playing defense. But keep attacking that ball. you got to go get that one and make that game-changing play. Michael Carter, one of the more improved players on that team. 
Probably a little heat coming by the Gophers. And they're going to force a three and out here on the punt. So that's the defensive sequence, Brock, that they were looking for to start this third and quarter. You talk about adjustments. They made a few there. They came up, and you could see the of Minnesota get up there and press. Don't just give them those easy completions on third down. They bring an extra defender. They come up and press. They force the issue, and most importantly, get themselves off the field for the first time tonight. Ryan Erksleben will punt. The name sounds familiar. His dad, Russell, a former player with the New Orleans Saints in the NFL, also held the NCAA record for the longest field goal in collegiate history. Michael Carter standing at his own 33-yard line. It's the first punt of the day for the Red Raiders, and not a good one by Erksley. And it's bouncing at the 39, and luckily for Texas Tech, it takes a pretty good bounce down to the 47-yard line as we go down to Jessica. Well, Mark, I spoke with assistant head coach Bill Miller about the emotions of this game, and he told me at half, he said his players are really not playing with discipline, and they're letting the emotions get the better of them. In fact, players tried to say, well, Texas Tech is doing this, and this is what's happening on. He said, you know what? I don't care, because you guys are doing a lot of the same things. He said as far as the X's and O's, they need to play a little bit more balanced and get the team off on third down. Well, they get a chance here on offense, Jessica. Philip Nelson. Back in the ball game at quarterback, he began the contest before giving way to Marquise Gray. There's that familiar three back rotation we've seen. And the run by Kirkwood gets about three out near midfield. And the second down and seven coming up. You can see the freshman Philip Nelson back in the game. He played most of that first quarter, the first two series. Gray came in and did some nice things as well. Time you can run it and establish your will. 30 runs to just six passes. That speaks to what the big boys are doing at the line of scrimmage. Second down and seven. There's a play action. Taking a shot at the post. And he had him. It's incomplete. Crawford Tufts was open on the post. They've run that three back look a number of times tonight in an excellent route. Anytime you turn that DB around and he's blind to the ball, that was Derek Mays. The young quarterback's got to learn. Just put a little extra air on that. When your receiver's got the DB beat, when he turns his back, he's lost that ball. Just give him an opportunity. Even if you've got to slow him down, typically you'll draw the pass interference, even if it is incomplete. Bigger margin of error if you literally put more air under that ball. 37 coming up. Take another shot. This one complete at the 19-yard line. Brock, as you alluded to, that had a little bit more air under it. Engel making the catch. And a first down for the Gophers on the gain of 31. And you'd love to see a young quarterback not repeat mistakes. You're going to see the corner out here by Engel. And once again, does an excellent job of getting that step. Doesn't have to always be a perfect throw. And if you've got to slow him down just a little bit, get that completion when they're that open. Just inside the 20. Minnesota sort of showing a little bit of attempted diversity here in their offensive attack. And that play back to their power running game, Brock. How does it work? And I love the formation. That's how it starts out. And at the point of attack, you're going to see the big fellas get a good push. And look at the three polar. Somewhere Marty Schottenheimer is smiling. <laughs> that is just power old fashioned football. But again, it's on the front side, mowing that defensive line down, allowing those that guard and that fullback and that extra tight end to lead up through. And anytime you can reestablish the line of scrimmage and get these bowling balls with legs going, you have a chance of success. Nelson, wide open and incomplete. They turn loose angle, and Nelson wishes he'd had that one back. Wow. I'll say it again, when you've got a receiver this wide open and an excellent concept here by Minnesota, they run a double post on the outside, and they drag the defenders here, and angle comes underneath that quarterback. Take a breath. He's wide open. Make it an easy throw and catch. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be wow. efficient. You could throw that thing end over end to him for a touchdown. What they do here on third and eight. Nelson plants his feet. 
That time he delivered touchdown to Crawford Tufts. So if I won't make the easy play, <laughs> let me just dodge a defender, scramble to my left, and just throw a dart for a touchdown. I said earlier, when you're looking at young, inexperienced quarterbacks, the one thing you don't want them to do is repeat mistakes. That time, he breaks the pocket, he settles down, he gathers himself, and he throws a strike. The Crawford Tufts' his first touchdown catch of the season and the first of his career. We are deadlocked at 24. For Nelson, meanwhile, that's the seventh touchdown pass of the season for him. And we got a tie ball game here in Houston, Texas. He made good on this one after missing earlier, no doubt. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN Live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Well, so far tonight, two ties and five lead changes. And Coach's wife, Rebecca Kill, leading the fight song, I'm, I'm guessing, Brock Heward. Is that how it goes? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Fired up at the second half. And how about the energy coming out? We talk a lot about the passion and the emotion in these bowl games. And Jerry Kill, I'm sure, implored his Golden Gophers at halftime to get that stop. You've got to force the three and out, get the ball back to your offense. And you love what you see out of your freshman quarterback responding to some negative plays. A big touchdown. we got to keep an eye on Jadeen Grant. He's got a touchdown return on a kickoff already tonight. A lot of traffic back there, and he's going the wrong way. Brought down at about the seven-yard line. Hey, folks, five games across ESPN and ESPN2 highlight Saturday's Capital One Bowl Week action. Well, uh, Brock, when you look across, which one jumps off the page at you? I'm really curious here. I think this is going to be a very physical affair for Mac Brown in Texas. Some high expectations this season. Some good moments, some real rough stretches defensively, and they're going to be tested physically in that one. Of course, Texas, uh, a couple of suspensions. Mike Riley, for me, year to year, does a great job coaching and uh, one of the underrated coaches in college football at Oregon State. Well, guess what we had, Mr. Jones? We've seen a few of these tonight. We had yet another penalty. We had a block in the back, and then after the play, another personal foul. And you could hear Jerry Kill talking to Mike Henry, number 30, his redshirt junior. Just can't afford it. We saw it destroy one of their drives earlier. You have Texas Tech backed up inside the 10-yard line. You love the energy, you love the passion, but you also got to play smart. Is that the old explanation to the coach on what happened? <laughs> Are you debriefing your position coach? Better than having to deal with head coach Jerry Kill. It's down and 10. Defense got a three and out for Minnesota last time. Maybe completes this pass, but hit immediately at the 24 yard line by Cedric Thompson. Is Amaro. Let's go downstairs to Jessica. Well, guys, we've talked a lot this game about the self-leadership of this team since Tommy Tuberville left, but the self-leadership that I'm seeing on the sideline is very negative, especially after that last score in Minnesota. And he's trying to turn the beat around here, and a nice play by Ward for the first down out to the 35. Got 11 on the play, spinning off a of contact and keeping those legs moving, Brock. He's a big time player too. We talked a lot about Darren Moore on the other side. But all Eric Ward did is catch 1,874 yards worth of receptions, 22 touchdowns as well the last two seasons. Beggy under duress, and he's going to be sacked. Back at the 29 yard line, the first one of the game for Minnesota. That's Hageman leading the way. That's 6'6, 300 pounds, and one of the better athletes on this team. And that's just effort, not necessarily a great move. Stand still at the point. But he doesn't give up on the play. He keeps his eyes up, has awareness to get his hands and shed that block at the right moment. And as he said, get that first real negative yardage play for Minnesota. Second and 15. 
Ford in motion takes the fly sweep. He's going to be bottled up. It's almost tackled for a gain, but he makes it to the 31. Got about a yard, setting up a third down and long for Texas Tech. So this Minnesota defense, what have they done here in the first five plays or so in the third well, quarter? They're playing with a lot more energy. You can see it. They're playing downhill. And let's watch now on third down and extra long. Do they come up and press? Or do they give some of that cushion, allow the completion underneath? Give him time. Going to take off, but not enough for the first down. Stopped up about two yards short. Now, do you think about going here, or is this a punting situation? Uh, they bring in the punt team after the 12-yard gain, so another three and out for the Gopher defense. You talked about it, Brock. It was huge that they get back to even pretty early. There's a look at Carter. Cousin of Tyrone Carter, who played at the University of Minnesota, struggled a little bit last year and earlier this year, and did some great work in the summer with his cousin Tyrone. And uh, Tyrone had a great talk with him about applying himself a little bit more fastidiously and doing his work. And he went from the uh, doghouse of Coach Jerry Kill to one of his favorites right now, and one of the better turnaround stories for the Gophers 46 yards on the punt nothing on the return Minnesota with the ball and a chance to take the lead when we come back ESPN college football the Meineke car care bowl of Texas is brought to you by the Capital One cash rewards card with a 50% annual bonus Bell modern southern style and five-hour energy, hours and hours of energy. Look at the pep rally by the Minnesota Team Hotel and Marquise Gray holding one of his two twin boys. Mark Sean and Marzell making the trip along with his wife. I'll tell you what, a great scene when you get a chance to hang around a bunch of the Bull fans that follow their team. We're at the same hotel as the Texas Tech Red Raider Nation. Not a bad set of goodies either. Yeah. 32-inch <laughs> yeah. flat screen TV yeah. and swag me out. <laughs> First down and 10. NCAA approved 32-inch TV. First down, Robert Williams. Williams got about three or four on the play. Texas Tech's defense has been pretty porous for most of the day and uh, they haven't come up with many stops either if you're going to stop that three back downhill run game you have got to do it initially you've got to find a way to get a level of penetration you can't just play patty cake at the line of scrimmage and allow them to mow you down and those pullers come and clean everybody else up chris thompson talked about the fit for his linebackers at that second level and that's what he's referring to the guys up front they've got to do their job they've got to reestablish that line so you can allow the fit those safeties and those linebackers to come in and not catch these running backs four yards downfield let's, let's talk a little bit more about the minnesota offense you got nelson who's out of the gate pretty well here in the third quarter marquis gray had a good showing in the second quarter do you still change it up if, if Nelson's got it rolling moving forward into the third and fourth quarter now? If he stays hot and you continue to get touchdown drives, I'd be a little apprehensive, but this is a game plan. The offensive coordinator, Matt Limegrover, said both quarterbacks are very comfortable playing in. And frankly, Mark, any quarterback, when you're running the ball at this kind of level, can play behind that line of scrimmage. And I like this, bring in both quarterbacks and show off some of Gray's athletic ability running the ball. Second and six for Minnesota. A nice run for the first down by Philip Nelson, the true freshman. He was Mr. Football in the state of Minnesota last year. Pretty poised for a true freshman. Picked up ten. Born to be a quarterback, says the coaching staff here in Minnesota. And really, as you spin this thing forward for Jerry Gill, a win tonight would be big for this offseason. But getting this quarterback in place for his program over the next three years, if you can find a freshman to build around him, that is huge.
Back to the running game, and Williams with a gaping hole at a 15-yard gallop for another first down for Minnesota. That was such a great look at what we talked about. These people at the second level, watch, they're catching them. That's an arm tackle. That's Cody Davis at 200 pounds trying to take on a back that's already gained momentum. That's 220 pounds with a low center of gravity. And anytime you're catching big backs downhill, that's a problem. There's a formation Brock that they've used with a lot of success tonight. Take it off again to Williams. Brought down after a gain of only five and even on the lesser runs they're still getting a good chunk of yardage and there's really no better feeling as an offense when you are a run dominated offense and to start to establish your will at the line of scrimmage they know what's coming you got three backs it's really what Jim Harbaugh did at Stanford it's what the great running teams in college football do here it is we're lining up we're showing our cards you can't stop it that can break a team's will, as just talked about earlier, with some of that sideline demeanor. Williams has run the ball 10 times now for 54 yards. Second and five for the Gophers. Here he is again. Puts his hat down and stopped up about a yard short of the first down. So it'll be third and short coming up. Blake Dees making the stop. And look at this clock once again, continuing to run exactly what we saw in the first quarter of action, really the first half. A two to one dominant There's effort no need. by Minnesota in that time of possession. And here's another chance to take a minute or two if you can get this third and one. There's no need to get fancy here. Pound away, Nelson and Gray in the ball game. And now Gray comes under and takes the snap. Boy, how often have you seen that play? <laughs> he got the first down. Gray came, motioned in, and went under the quarterback, uh, the center. Hey, what? Got my spotter doing some work here today. Can't remember seeing that kind of play. Kirkwood in a tailback on first and ten. Kirkwood. Stopped up at about the line of scrimmage. You know, this Minnesota team, a little bit younger than Texas Tech. In fact, 43% of the players Minnesota used this year had never played a game for them before. And to underscore some of those numbers, only seven players here today have ever played in a bowl game before. Texas Tech, a lot more familiar with this bowl scene. Second down and ten from just inside Texas Tech side of, of midfield. Henry the fullback. Pass incomplete and no flag on the play. It's intended for Ray. Third and ten coming up. And a pivotal play coming up for Minnesota, right? And it's been a pivotal drive here as you've gotten the ball back at your own 10 yard line. You've marched down with a couple more first downs. And this is where you've got to be careful here. Your defense is forced two, three and outs. It's third and 10. You've not turned the ball over. Seven interceptions in just six games for the freshman quarterback coming in. He's done a nice job with decision making. If it's not there, the worst thing you could do is try to force the issue. They've been winning third down today. They're seven of nine on third down. Pass complete, but short of the first down. At about the 39, pardon me, the 41, Engel making the stop. Now, is it time you maybe roll the dice? <laughs> Look at Zach Epping. That what a great shot, 52. We saw him earlier with two unsportsmanlike calls and that big beard coming out of his chin strap, and he's imploring that sideline, let's go. We're wearing these guys down at the line of scrimmage. We're bigger, we're stronger, we've enforced our will. I like this call. Here. He doesn't seem like the type of guy that wants to play for a tie. Fourth and two. One of the early defining points of this game coming up. Kirkwood, the lone back, and now they line up out of the eye. Henry, the fullback. And Minnesota going to call the timeout. Minnesota.
Jerry Kill going to talk it over. Remember the last time these two teams played, they went into overtime back in the Insight Bowl several years ago. It was a classic, a game in which Minnesota led by over 30 points. Might be headed that direction again, tied at 24. Back under the lights at Reliant. Minnesota and Texas Tech nodded at 24, under five minutes to go here. In the third quarter, Mark Jones along with Brock Heward. Jessica Mendoza down on the sidelines. Fourth and two coming up for Minnesota. Well, Where do you say they go? They well, you said you'd be disappointed they didn't go for it. And I agree with you. I like this call. Kirkwood dotting the eye. Henry and Wade leading the way. They're going to run it. And he got stopped up short. The Red Raiders raise up. Bush making the tackle. As Kirkwood tried to bounce outside, nowhere to go, though. Well, that's the key right there. He tried to bounce outside one of the first times in that alignment the Texas Tech got penetration. Bush finished the play, but it was at the point of attack, which we've been talking about all night. Watch the line of scrimmage reassert itself there by Texas Tech. The number of Red Raiders getting leverage, getting underneath, and allowing Bush to make the play in the backfield. The defining point here in the third quarter as the Red Raiders take over on downs at the 44 yard line pretty good starting field position for this offense which has had consecutive three and outs in the third quarter. He's taking a shot. They're showing blitz. He wants to throw it deep down the field. Look at the chance a flag thrown. Play a game offense number seven five yard penalty. Well, not the down. way you want to come out of the gate here after taking over with a little momentum. Second half, a couple of three and outs, two punts. First half, they scored on every time they touched the ball. First and 15, back at the 39. Baby. Complete, out to the 48. Tomorrow. Well, game of cat and mouse here. Minnesota is disguising a little bit more than they did in the first half. Remember Texas Tech a group that scored hundred points less in the second half this season as teams start to figure that tempo out. Daigie finds his receiver at the 47 yard line a gain of five to Moore but it's going to be about a yard short of the first down. Third and about one to go. First down at 35 by Williams. I'm going to say he was down. Got enough for the first down. Got a pair. Kenny Williams and Eric Stevens doing the majority of the ball carrying. This time it was Williams. It looked like it came out when he hit the ground. It looks like the. Uh, and they decided to look at this one again. Previous play is under further review. A replay official today, a veteran replay official, Tom Hoffman. Jerry Kill on the sidelines. His team coming back to tie to 24. Kill has rebuilt a couple of programs already at Southern Illinois and Northern Illinois, and now doing the same at Minnesota. As we take one more look at this, this uh, couldn't see if his knee had already hit when the ball came loose. The call in the field was that uh, he was down by contact first. But in speaking with Jerry Kill a little bit earlier this week in our meetings, uh, talked about the turning point of the season for this Minnesota team being the big moment against Illinois. When they won by running the ball in the second half, they became bowl eligible with the sixth win of the season and uh, really a critical moment for the program. And now it's about uh, taking the next step. Talked about the foundation being in place. 
and getting another solid recruiting class in as we take another look at this. And you hear it in every game with every replay, but it's exactly what they're talking about in the booth is this indisputable visual evidence. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. The runner was down, first down. Not confirmed. Calls on the field is stands telling you that there was not indisputable. So called a down by contact on the field. And I believe the correct call, Mark. First and 10 from the Minnesota 45 for Texas Tech. Red Raiders looking for their eighth win of the season. A team that had a very promising start to their year, but ended up losing four of their last five. Maybe given time. Dumps it off to his back. Williams showing a little bit of giddy up speed. Down to the 25 before finally being brought down by Thompson. So deflating as a defense. They wanted the double move. They've been throwing underneath all night long. They try to slam and go to Ward. Daggy says, okay, you're going to play soft zone coverage. Let me just dump it to my back. And he gashes the other check down. And 19, here's Williams again running at this time. Kenny Williams got about seven. Rollis making the stop for Minnesota. Get rid of it quickly, and this looks good for more. And he got more touchdown, but there's a flag on the play. Let's see if it stands. Antonio Johnson missed a tackle. Holding on the offense number three. Ten yard penalty till second down. That's against Tyson Williams, the receiver. That's going to come back. And that's within the offense on every single snap. If Seth Daigie sees too many men around the line of scrimmage, if it's a run play, well, he's just going to throw it out there. He's got one on one outside. And you love the effort here of Tyson Williams, number three up top, but there's a hold. You see him clearly grab the jersey. That's a veteran move by Carter as well, making sure that the referee saw sold, the tug on he? the jersey. He sure <laughs> did. Three minutes to go in the third. Stevens in the backfield. Pass incomplete at the 12-yard line. Partner, I want to ask you something. We haven't called D.L. Wilhite's name. He's the top sack master on the defense for Minnesota. What does it say about what Texas Tech's doing on offense? <laughs> well, how many times has Mr. Daigie held the ball for more than two seconds? Yeah. Wilhite's a speed rusher, eight and a half on the season. It really negated him. And a nice run by Stevens. <laughs> Stevens inside the 10. It's going to be first and goal for the Red Raiders. Look at that movement. Look at the helmet on a helmet in those Minnesota defense linemen. You want to stop the run. Your big guys have to get off those blocks. They cannot be moved off of their point as much as this goal for unit has tonight. First and goal from the second. Davey completes it down to the two-yard line. That was Moore hit by Carter. And Carter delivering a nice blow. Gain of about five, the second goal. The big body receiver has shown he really all night tonight. He's not just a fade route. He's willing to get in there and take on those safeties and linebackers and corners. That's the advantage of being 6'4", 215 pounds. Headley Adrian Waddle, the all-conference Left tackle have to come out of the game because his helmet came off. Daggy, meanwhile, 22 of 30, 169 yards passing. Second and goal. The fly sweep to Grant. Touchdown. Man, did that turbo kick in.
And tempers frayed again down in the field. We have seen a litany of that's on the sportsman like contact. Tom McCabe, the, the referee, has been very busy tonight. You saw him even give some conversation back to that Minnesota defense. He's tired of hearing it. Didn't want to hear any more negotiating, any more complaining. Just clean this game up after the whistle. After the touchdown, personal foul, number 22 on the offense. Throw a punch. He's been ejected. Wow. The foul being forced on the kickoff. Amaro has been ejected. Amaro uh, pleading his innocence with his hands. He's number 22 here, back after missing the last six games with a spleen injury. Okay, you drive your guy in the ground, now get off of him. You can't punch him. I don't think he has a case. I mean, that looked like a punch. That looked like a punch. Brock Heward and they're reviewing. Ooh, I don't think that ball crossed the goal line either. Yeah, we, we might have a tie game after we take a look at this. I think that's wow. a tremendous shot right there on the goal line. No, he didn't score. He did not get in. And what a wonderful play there by the redshirt junior linebacker Aaron Hill, 57 to come in, and he actually punched the ball out. So now we've got an interesting situation with Amaro being ejected, the personal foul, and the touchdown that really wasn't a touchdown, if that proves to be true. Because that ball never touches the plane, never gets to that goal line. Now, does it go out of bounds before it goes through? I think it goes out of bounds. It's going to be at the half foot line when the ball goes out of bounds. I don't think it ever crossed over the goal line for a touchback. I think this ball will be punched, will be at the half yard line. But what about the penalty now? They, got, they might bring it out to the 15. There's one more look at it. That's exactly what's going to happen. I believe that 15 yard penalty after that ball is clearly punched out before it breaks the plane. You then have the unsportsmanlike conduct, the punch, and it should take this ball back. Personal foul, 15 yards. Boy, that is a crazy swing of events. Well, right now we have the opportunity to bring in Mark Klusinski, the referee from the Mid-American Conference who's joining us. Mark, uh, tell us exactly what happens with the sequence of events that unfolds if the touchdown is overruled with the penalty. Well, if they're going to call the ball short of the goal line and out of bounds, which is what it looks like here, we're going to... We're going to assess that 15-yard penalty on the result of that play. So we're going to go back from, say, inside the one to probably around the 15-yard line. So this is a big call. And regardless, Amaro is still ejected from the game. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Mark, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Here's the call. After further review, the ball was fumbled out of bounds at the half-yard line. The ball be placed after the 15 yard penalty. It'll be third and goal from the 15 and a half yard line. Boy, what a swing of events for Texas Tech and Jakeem Grant. And what a play by Aaron Hill, the linebacker there for Minnesota, 57, and never give up on that play. And while Amaro gets called and kicked out of this game for a, a legal punch. They teach that all the time to these defenders to punch that ball out. That's exactly what Hill does, coupled with the penalty. Now knocks the Raiders all the way back. Just outside the 15, third and goal. Stevens in the backfield. Keep an eye on Moore and Ward. Especially Moore, the big target. You see the screen is incomplete, batted down. By Hageman. He's one of the best athletes on the team, let alone just the defense. <laughs> what a crazy turn wow. of events, huh? Do you think it's going to be a touchdown? They march down the field after they really gain momentum with the fourth down stop instead. 
you have exactly what Chris Thompson, the interim head coach, and you're just looking at, told Jess coming out of halftime that we have got to play smart. Can we be emotional? Can we be passionate? Absolutely. But after the whistle, punching a player in the face, ridiculous. I'm busting it. Attempt this field goal. And 32 yards out. And he knocks it through to give Texas Tech a three point lead. But there's a flag down on the play. Prior to the snap, ball start on the offense. Number 43. Five yard penalty. So far down. We'll have to do it again. You know, the folks who traveled here from Lubbock, they don't like it. <laughs> but if they were privy to seeing what we're seeing here on all of yeah. these replays, I think they've gotten the majority of these calls right tonight. And absolutely the last few here that have really turned the tide. This now from 37 yards out. The four of uh, Ryan Beston. They block it. They got a surge from the left side and blocked it. Minnesota's defense comes up on special teams as well. Grand body comes up and makes a great play on special teams. What a crazy sequence. It all started with the fumble by Jakeem Grant on what, what many thought was a touchdown, but clearly it came out. Add that to the unsportsmanlike conduct play, and it brought it out to the 15-yard line. Then Hagman with the batted down pass. The field goal, there's uh, Amaro up at the top of the screen with a punch. That got him ejected, and then now the blocked field goal. That's the third one that he's had blocked this year. So Texas Tech was sitting pretty about four plays ago. And now it's still tied. Here's Marquise Gray. And Gray is off and running. Out near midfield of the 47. A 26-yard scamper. And Mays is injured on the play. And here's 250 pounds coming right at you. That's how you want to tackle a big man. You're not going to take him up high. But unfortunately, a ton of force also go into the headgear there, Derek Mays. And remember, he's playing because of suspended for team rules violation starting corner Cornelius Douglas. So you're going to be working now on your third string corner for Texas Tech if Mays can't return. Now they've had some uh, changes there in the secondary as the athletic trainers tend to Mays on the field. Let's look ahead at the Capital One Bowl on January 1st. Georgia taking on Nebraska. Speaking of guys not being in there and being knocked out, and that is about as big a guy as you're going to get in all the college football. We saw Georgia twice yeah. this season. John Jenkins, their nose tackle, he anchors the center of that line. It's not about sacks for a 360-pound nose tackle. And as you see with both Mel Kuyper, Tom McShay, he'll be a first-round pick. Unfortunately, academically ineligible will miss that game with Nebraska. And that's nice a good to see Mays, uh, yeah, get off the field under his own power. First and ten after that nice sprint by Marquise Gray. Philip Nelson in a quarterback now. How about the fight of Minnesota here in the second half? Wow. Play action, taking a shot up top. Out of bounds, incomplete. Great effort, though, by Derek Engel. And I love the call. What are you going to do when you've got a backup to a backup in a game? Well, you go right after him. And he has an He's excellent out. call once again. Just unfortunately out of bounds. you got to save yourself a little bit of room there if you're Derek Engel. He doesn't. A good throw by the quarterback is just out of bounds. Second and ten.
Nelson keeps it himself, and Nelson with a nice gain of about nine. It'll be third and short. Is it just me, or does Minnesota appear to be a uh, Kind of diversifying itself a little bit more through the passing game here in the second half. Oh, there's no doubt about it. They talked about that coming out of halftime. Jerry Kill's group, they look at the numbers 30 to 6. You love that. You love the points. But you know the best way to attack is to have a little bit of balance. On third and short. Looks like Nelson keeps it and uh, finally got enough for the first down. Remember, this Minnesota team has never won this year when trailing at the half and they were down by seven at the break and they've never won under Jerry Killo in 15 in games they trailed at halftime I think that really speaks to some of the fight and some of the emotion that they've had in this second half and that's going to be the end of the third quarter of play they gave him enough for the first down and Minnesota Looking to atone for the loot that loss last time in overtime in the bowl game years ago against Texas Tech. Five games across ESPN and ESPN2 highlight Saturday's Capital One Bowl Week action. Uh, Brock, which of those games jumps off the page at you? Well, you're going to be looking at two NFL quarterbacks in this game. I know Geno Smith's Heisman, unfortunately, went up in Flames about week six of this season. He still threw 41 touchdowns, had a brilliant year. And Ryan Nassib, quarterback at Syracuse, Stouts love his arm strength, his toughness. That's a marquee matchup of a couple young stud quarterbacks. Did you take a shot here? Love this situation in plus territory. First and ten. There's the plate fake. There's the shot. Got a man wide open. They took a shot and got it. Watch the play action fake and those safeties and those linebackers get lost in coverage. And I said earlier, you could have punted one of those incompletions that he tried to be perfect on. Well, that time again, Philip Nelson is learning. If I've got a receiver that open, I can even underthrow him and still make the big play down the field. Before the snap, the previous play is under review. Oh, boy. What do we miss here? Maybe uh, he came down before the goal line, perhaps. Jerry Kill a little perplexed as well. It doesn't have to be overly exotic. I mean, that's not a complex route with eight guys into or seven, five guys into the secondary. That's a two-man route. And they ran it earlier in the game with success as well. Let's see if he got in or not. Well, he's on top of the defender. And the defender propelled him into the end zone. His knee didn't appear to touch. It's all going to be, I think, about that right knee. And does the right knee ever touch the ground? This is a better angle here, Brock. Or the no, it didn't. Well, you see the left elbow and arm, but I think the ball had crossed at that point. As long as the knee doesn't touch, I think that's clearly a touchdown. That pass a little bit underthrown. Still got there though. Ruling on the field is that it's a touchdown. Here's one more look and angle. Because of the body of the defender, that right knee never touches. And at that point, I don't think we're here to assume. Where the ball is, where the ball is at that juncture, I don't think you can assume. I don't think that is indisputable. That right knee never touches, and I think that is awfully close to breaking the threshold of the goal line. Well, there must be indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field. The ruling on the field is a touchdown. You know what I love? I love when you repeat plays that are successful. Just because it happens once and you hit them, I think oftentimes coaches will say, oh, they'll be ready the next time. No, they won't. Not if you continue to run it and set up that play pass. The runner's elbow was down at the half-yard line. Ooh. Let me first and goal from the half-yard line. Okay. So Engel did not get into the end zone at the half-yard line. That was a career-long catch for Engel. I, what a great time to take that shot. I still I honestly still do not see that. 
I can understand how you could maybe assume that that was down and the ball wasn't quite there, but to me, that is not indisputable. Our veteran replay official today, Tom Hoffman. Got some good, good looks at it. And you've got to avoid those negative plays. Nelson keeps it himself. They're not going to give him a touchdown. He did apparently get well, maybe a foot closer, inches closer. I think that's the right call, and I think that is always a dangerous move. You will see Tom Brady, for example, stick that ball out, but you better make sure you break the threshold if you do that. The freshman that time tries to protect himself, get the surge, and it wasn't there. On second and goal coming up. Kirkwood, the deep back. Kirkwood, he didn't get in either. And it's going to be third and goal coming up. Might they? Could they? Texas Tech's defense with two big plays. Now, what do you already do here, Brock? You've tried it up the middle between the tackles twice. If you were going to throw it, you would have loved to have thrown it on second down. I'm a little surprised you've not brought in the 250-pound quarterback and Marquise Gray also to run some of those sneaks. Third and goal. It's going to be a big, heavy run. Into the end zone. Awesome. Touchdown. Drew Goodger with the catch. Awesome play. Breaking tendency. You bring the extra lineman in. You shift. Everything says, as I uttered it out of my mouth, big, heavy run. And instead, you play fake. You pop up. You hit Goodger, the true sophomore that's also back from injury. That's tremendous execution, play calling, breaking tendencies. That's how you do it down by the goal line. Well, they had it called back last time. This one was more definitive. And Minnesota, after all that, a seven-point lead just underway here in the fourth and final quarter of play. Off the play fake, Philip Nelson. Boy, his poise really belying his age as a true freshman. Back with more after this. Let's take a look at tonight's Reese's Perfect Play. And a pivotal one. The buck up right there. By Bobby Calhoun coming off the edge. And what looked like a promising scoring drive for Texas Tech. The touchdown called back, the result of the replay, the ejection by Amaro, the 15-yard penalty put them in a position to kick it. Then they took a five-yard penalty as well to move it back five more. And Minnesota now with a seven-point lead, 31-24. That's the sixth lead change of the night. Take a knee. Take one more look at the touchdown. What was the key here? And a little uh, offensive formation nuance. Well, the key all night has been what they've done in formations. This is your left tackle, Ed Olson, and you're going to see him shift over. And when he does, look who becomes the end man on the line of scrimmage. That's Drew Goodger. The defense sees. Look at the defensive end. Look at Jackson Richards, 43, said, no, 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 that's not a tackle. That's a tight end. He still gets lost. I said earlier, and actually in that shift, here it comes. Here comes that big, heavy run. They break a tendency, they use the formation against them and take advantage. That's tremendous stuff. Goodger's third touchdown catch. First and 10 for Texas Tech. He's not scored here in the second half so far. Beggy, nicely defended, incomplete by Martez Shabazz. The pass intended for Ward. 
What do you make of the way this secondary has played today been just against so this high scoring offense, the number two passing offense in the country? Just so much more aggressive here in the second half. The whole mindset of the defense, they're getting up, they're getting into the gaps with the linebackers, they're disguising more, they're pressing, they're bailing. They're just showing a whole lot more to Dagey in the second half, which I think you had to do against the veteran quarterback. Dagey down the middle, incomplete. Off the hands of Tyson Williams, and he had nothing but real estate, open real estate ahead of him. And the redshirt senior knows it. I was just praising all the setup of the play in Minnesota. Well, Texas Tech does the same thing. They spread him out. They get the matchup inside they want. Williams on a linebacker. Everything is done. The execution is there. Unfortunately, the finish wasn't. Third and ten. It has been a different Minnesota defense in the second half here. Right from the opening possession by Texas Tech. Pressure off the edge. Dagey escaping miraculously. And then brought down finally short of the first down to the 30-yard line. They're saying that there might have been a fumble. Minnesota football. Hagman made the hit. And the Gophers have it deep in Texas Tech territory. Rollis making the recovery. And I think clearly Deggie's right knee is down here, is it not? Let's see if he starts the rip process. I think that knee is going to be down. This has got to be looked at again. Yeah, they're going to bring. Well, they're going to at least take a look the at this. The previous play yeah. is under further review. I thought the last one was for <laughs> sure the touchdown. Not indisputable. But I'm not going to get trigger happy. I, I think that his knee was down before the process of that rip. But once again, excellent coaching by Jerry Kill and his defensive staff. We saw the punch earlier from Aaron Hill. There you see the rip from Mike Rollis. Those are the fundamentals you work on day in and day out. You take advantage of this extra whole 15 practice session you have, not just in your formations and your cute little wrinkles offensively, <laughs> but the core fundamentals of what you teach defensively. This would be uh, fourth down. And subsequently, probably a punt. As he's ripping, does right that ball there. start to come out before the right knee touches? Well, the ruling on the field is a fumble. I think that clearly that right knee is down just as he starts to rip and the ball comes out. After further review, the runner's knee was down before he fumbled. It'll be fourth down and six. All right, so instead, Texas Tech will punt. But this defense for Minnesota has acquitted itself extremely well in the second half, holding Texas Tech scoreless in the third quarter. Well, they've gotten them into some third and extra longs as well, Mark. It was a third and 15. That was a third and 10. And that's advantage defense. That allows you to keep everything in front of you, those short completions and move the chains in the first half. I'm moving them here in the second half. Hurts labeled the punt. Carter standing back at his own 27-yard line. He's in Tyrone Carter that played at Minnesota, formerly of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Catches it on the fly and falls forward to the 39-yard line. 38-yard punt, six on the return. The Gophers in business with the lead when we come back. College football, the Meineke Car Care Bowl of Texas, is brought to you by Meineke Car Care Center. My money, my choice, my Meineke. Lexus, the Lexus December to Remember sales event is on. This is the pursuit of perfection. And Wrangler, nothing beats Wrangler comfort. Wrangler, real, comfortable jeans. Oh, look at the. Uh... One of the unique hairstyles in the stands here in Reliant. Minnesota with a seven-point lead, 12-26 to go here in the fourth quarter. Second meeting all time between these two squads, and uh, Philip Nelson coming out onto the field. Uh, what do you do with the quarterback rotation if you're 
Jerry Kill right now. Think, do, you, do you keep him in or do you switch to Gray like you've been doing? I think you do exactly what you have been doing. I'd still find a play or two for Gray, especially those that have worked tonight. Some of that zone read. But your freshman quarterback's playing the best game here he's played since the Purdue game. 7-13, buck 38, two touchdowns and efficient. The handoff to Williams. Williams got stuck. Gained about two on the play. Second down and eight coming up for Minnesota. This is a Minnesota team that has, prior to tonight, struggled to score points, Brock. Especially late in the season in Big Ten Conference play. But putting up 31 against Texas Tech. Scored 44 in that Purdue game where Phillip was really good outside of that over the last 10 weeks. By far the most that they have scored. Kirkwood back in the ball game at tailback. And Nelson runs it out to the 43. It'll be third down and uh, about five to go. And uh, Marquise Gray still on the sidelines for Minnesota. They lead by seven points. Still too early to play it too conservatively, though, right? Absolutely. Third and six. Where do you take your shot here? I like the play pass. Play pass has been successful tonight, and I like this quarterback on the move. Nelson has his man incomplete. Intended for Crawford Tufts. And he overthrew him by just a yard or two. That's the second time he's done that with Crawford Tufts tonight. Fourth down, and they'll have to punt. Yeah, when he has missed these this evening, he's just tried to be too perfect. What do you mean by that? Well, once again, a situation where how do you most improve your margin of error on a throw like that when your receiver has got the DB beat? Give him a chance. Just put a little bit more air on that. Your receivers have shown tonight they're going to go up and make a play for you. Looks late in the punt. Pardon me, that's uh, Eldridge. Zolik watches it bounce at the 20 yard line out of bounds. First down and 10 for Texas Tech. An offense that has been impotent and stagnant here in the second half. The only meeting between Minnesota and Texas Tech was a classic. The 2006 Inside Bowl saw the Gophers take a 31 point lead midway through the third quarter behind quarterback Brian Cupido. At halftime, Mike Leach told his team they could make history with a comeback, and that's exactly what they did. A 52-yard field goal at the end of regulation tied it, and in overtime, Shannon Woods' touchdown sealed the greatest comeback in bowl history. And we've got a tight one here in the fourth quarter. Mark Jones chopping it up alongside Brock Heward, Jessica Mendoza down on the sidelines. 10.45 to go in the fourth quarter. Texas Tech looking for some answers offensively. The pass complete to Moore. And Moore out of bounds short of the first down. What's been the problem with this Texas Tech offense in the second half, Brock? They've gotten into those third and extra long situations. They've not found those easy completions early. And let's also remember Sonny Cumbie. He's been elevated offense coordinator the first time in his career. He's called plays. And even though there's a fifth year senior quarterback, there is always a comfort level with the departed Neil Brown. On the carry, this is Stevens. With a nice spin move and brought down at the 40 for first down. A nice gain of 13 for the Red Raiders. And on top of that, let's give Minnesota some credit for what they have done, some of their adjustments they made both offensively and defensively. There's a good look at Sonny Cumbie trying to play this game a snap ahead. Stevens again. Gain of about eight. Brought down by Thompson, but a flag down in the play. And oh, by the way, that's had something to do with it as well. The flags, yeah. 11 penalties now for Texas Tech, a group that averaged seven a game to rank 114th out of 120 in college football. And keep in mind that uh, Jay Samaro has been ejected from the game because of a punch he Personal threw. foul, unnecessary roughness on the offense number 19. It's a 15-yard penalty. Replay, first down. That's the fifth 
personal foul penalty in the game on Texas Tech. This uh, game at times, partners, look like a street fight, Texas cage match. Well, we talked about the rodeo earlier that the Minnesota <laughs> yeah. team won. It is one part in a bowl season. The familiarity is you're hanging out with these different guys during the week. We talked about the 15 practices where you're hitting one another. And coming out here tonight, getting a chance to hit the other jersey, but it's been after the whistle just simply too many times. By the way, that rodeo thing, I'm, I'm told it's a, called a cattle scramble when the players are trying to round up those calves, okay? Thank you. All right, just, just so we're down with the indigenous people here and look at this i said earlier this is what's happened in this second half they've gotten behind the chains taken away that short passing game where they're most effective stevens in the backfield on second and 17. a little pressure coming heaved downfield and intercepted by carter they went to work on the best cover corner for minnesota and paid the price that's the first turnover of the game by either team and the third interception of the year for that guy Carter now these core corners have played with a whole different level of aggressiveness in the second half you see the eyes in the backfield that's well done that's textbook I talked earlier about the fundamentals defensively of punching and ripping well that's a senior quarterback getting his eyes back to the quarterback there you see a little bit of the limitations of Daigie's arm down the field. That ball trails inside. His receiver doesn't help him out, falls down. Ward, and big, crucial, critical fourth quarter takeaway from Minnesota. And now Marquise Gray in the quarterback, so they've changed it up here with 9.42 to go in the game. Gray hands it on. A nice run by Kirkwood, picks up four. That's how they started the game, pounding away and finding a lot of success. And this is where you would like to take advantage of the 32 minutes to 18 minutes of time of possession advantage you have right now. This is where you hope your offense, all those body blows, all those runs throughout this game, your big fellas have done a nice job setting the tone, can really wear down in this fourth quarter. The front seven of Texas Tech, and if they're going to load the boxes they are right now, then you've got to win them one on ones. Second and six. Kirkwood. The gaping hole gets a first down. A little bit of yardage to spare. Gained eight on the play. You know, back to that interception by Carter. His cousin Tyrone played at Minnesota. And Michael Carter, number 23 on defense, wasn't always doing the right thing. For head coach Jerry Kilson, when his cousin Tyrone visited over the summer, said, you know what? I put a lot of groundwork in, setting a good foundation for that Carter name. And you've got to start living up to it. And he turned it around and now bearing fruit for that defense setting up the offense here on first and ten. Gray overshoots his man incomplete. Intended for Engel. It's a good thing that, second and ten. It's a good thing they put down some soft field turf for these wide receivers <laughs> because they have had separation tonight. But these poor guys have been gymnasts flying all over the place trying to catch some of these errant inaccurate passes and it's unfortunate. I said earlier you're going to get one on ones now the way you have run it. And that's a simple pitch and catch, and unfortunately, just the finish and the execution isn't there. Second down and ten. Remember, it was great that started the year as a quarterback for the first three games before he was injured. Keeps it. Got about two on the play before Bush made the stop, and a flag as well. The pace of this game has been slowed by some flags and some replays plodding along now. And now they're going to pick the flag up and I, say there is no flag. Yeah, I think the ball may have come out late, but all this is doing is now setting up a very critical third and seven where this starts to come into play. You move the change right now with the way that you're running it, you have an opportunity to continue to knock some minutes off that clock. Third and seven. They've got to get to the 48. They've been winning on third down tonight. Nine of 13. Gray with time. Way overthrown. Intended for Crawford Tufts. He wasn't even in the, in the neighborhood. And he knows it. Those are two misses on this drive. 
And offensive coordinator Matt Limegrover is walking that delicate line between, okay, do I run it? Do I run it against all these numbers? I've got one on ones. And that's not a complicated, complex route. You've got wide open receivers. You've just got to finish. So Zalik standing back at his own 20 yard line. Ready for this punt. From Eldred. It's off a high spiral. So Zalik fields it at the 23. Nice run, Zazali. There's a flag down, and he's down at the 38. But there's a flag all the way back at the 35-yard line. And that's going to be penalty number 13 on the night for the Red Raiders. Zazali uh, doing his best, Wes Welker. The return, illegal block below the waist, number 24. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Take one more look at where it happened. Low block. 7.23 to go. They still have the ball, though, when we return. You know, both teams visited different places during the week, but this might have been one of the more touching scenes. The Depelchen Children's Center. Recipients of a lot of Christmas joy and holiday joy here in Houston. The teams had a chance to spend some time with the kids and had a great time. The Christmas season, the season of giving. Texas Tech with the football. Just under seven and a half to go. He completes it. Williams with the catch. Well, it's been an evening and giving, unfortunately, for Texas <laughs> Tech, Mark. 13 penalties and not of the small variety. 135 yards. And worth noting on that return, it may have looked like a clean block, but you cannot go below the waist on any return in the change of possession, be it an interception or a punt return like that. That's the 15-yard penalty. Foster now in the Wildcat. Takes the direct snap. And makes it out to about the 28-yard line. This offense of the Red Raiders, Brock, in the first half, they scored literally every time they got a hold of the football, every time they touched it. Second half, a different story. Third and one coming up. Daigie going to the sidelines. A little bit more Wildcat look here. Well, this is your seniors. You're three of them up front of the line of scrimmage saying, hey, we've done a good job ourselves of pushing these guys around. Give us an opportunity to set the tone here late in the fourth quarter. Stevens taking the direct snap. Runs with it and gets the first down. All the way out to the 41, in fact. First and 10 with 6.15 to go. 13-yard game. Yeah, 140 yards rushing tonight for Texas Tech, and you can see the yards per carry for all of these backs. This offensive line, as I said earlier, very veteran, and I bet getting a little salty over there saying, hey, it's not, not just Minnesota up front that can control this thing. Let us do some damage as well here, make it a little bit easier on us. Well, Texas Tech a little bit more balanced than you would have thought coming into this game. 140 rushing, 193 passing here on first down and 10. Got about three on the play. What do you make of the fact that uh, the number two passing offense in the country is a little bit more towards the running trend today? Well, what do you make of the Baylor game last night? Yeah. Over 300 <laughs> yards rushing against a pretty good UCLA defense. When you have really elite speed and you're quicker and you're faster and your linemen get a helmet on a helmet, you get a chance to have some of that balance and some of the success in the run game. On second and seven. Baby. Intercepted the second one of the night by Carter. He juggled it and then finally corralled it. So Carter wins another battle on the corner. Talked about his cousin Tyrone getting him on the right path, and it's really paying off. How about the concentration? 
He's National Defensive Player of the Week against Purdue. Six pass breaks, at break, pass breakups, and interception return for a touchdown. And tonight, here in this second half, he has just been phenomenal. Look at the eyes. Once again, that is all built out of your studying, your videotape, your training, your fundamentals. Yeah, he's really the barometer of that defense for Minnesota. Now, Philip Nelson back to the ball game. Look at his great receptions this year. Ricardo also getting it done after turning it around in the classroom as well. He's going to graduate. False start on the offense, number 52. Five yard penalty. First down. Well, Jerry Kill wants to see that clock run, not stop. Well, this is part of the challenge now when you've lost six of eight down the stretch. And Jerry Kill has talked a lot in building this program. You also got to learn how to win. And to do so, you got to learn how to finish in these moments. The previous two drives have been three and out. They've been incompletions with open receivers. Very negative play. Three snaps, setting you back. The defense is giving you every opportunity get this done offensively now first and 15 that's Kirkwood over the right side got about four on the plate it'll be second down and 11 well they went to uh, Marquise Gray in the last sequence offensively back to Nelson here what do you think went into that thinking? I think the two missed incompletions, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Big ones, right? I mean, had guys open. Second and 11. The clock becomes your friend here down the stretch. Down to the 40 yard line. Nelson kept it himself. Got six. Looking at a third down and about five to go here. And this Nelson is, stays in. And this is where I am sure head coach is talking to his long time offensive coordinator, Matt Linegrover, saying, What do we got here? We've got third and about four and a half, five yards to go. Our defense has played lights out. I'm going to give you two plays to finish this ball game out. Time to close the sale if they can. Nelson's going to keep it and stop short of the first down. And really not in any kind of position for field goal attempts either. No, and you're just Texas now, Tech calls timeout. And unfortunately, Mark, you're also long enough here. You would have loved to have split the this difference and gotten this to fourth out. and one, fourth and two. But I think at fourth and four, you're going to make them drive the length of this field, especially the way your defense is played. Hey, folks, 8.30 on New Year's Day. It's the Discover Orange Bowl. The MAC champion, North Illinois, looks to make a statement with their high-powered offense. They'll face ACC champ Florida State, the Discover Orange Bowl, number 15, Northern Illinois versus number 12, Florida State. New Year's Day at 8.30 on ESPN, also live on Watch ESPN app and ESPN radio. And Jordan Lynch said that, uh, hey, Florida State's never seen an offense like ours. Yeah, but we saw Florida State's defense twice, <laughs> Mr. Good. Jones. <laughs> I think I'd tell Jordan, you know what, man? Yeah. In the MAC this year, you've also not seen a defense quite like Florida State's front seven. That's some NFL players on that Seminole D. Zalik back on his own 10 yard line. No call for the fair catch. Oh, he didn't call for the fair catch. And takes it out to the 18. 82 yards away after the 29 yard punt and seven yard return. Dagey though has struggled the last couple of times he's touched the ball in his last four passes he's thrown two interceptions and you would bet that uh, he might try and stay away from Michael Carter at this point Matt, he's picked him off twice already it's an excellent point with 324 and two timeouts there is an eternity but they know how to look group it's at the basis of what they do Play within your scheme, but as a quarterback, you better be very careful of a corner that's been reading your eyes. Maybe time for getting a double move. Gets it out quick. That's complete. Out to Williams. 
Williams got about seven, close to eight on the play. Second and two. Texas Tech with a couple of timeouts remaining. Minnesota with one. Remember the last time these two teams played, the only other time, they went into overtime before Texas Tech won by three. Only get second and one. And there's the first down reception at the 39 yard line by Eric Ward. 13 yard pickup. Texas Tech has also, Mark, played three overtime games this season, including their finale against Baylor. Their only loss in those three. This pass complete to Moore. And Moore is going to be stopped up his forward progress about the 44. Keep him in bounds. That's the tenth catch of the night for Darren Moore, their leading receiver. That clock running from the 44. Just get a sense at some point you're going to have to double move these corners that are just staring at the quarterback. Wide open over the middle. Complete to Moore. A 15-yard game, and Texas Tech, Brock, making it look real easy right now. Approaching two minutes to go. Up to 41. Well, Davies got all day. Wide open, and batted away at the last moment. By Shabazz. Martez Shabazz with some closing speed. A lot of folks looked at the numbers and the statistics, and you see Minnesota group that's 11th best in college football against the pass. Yes, they didn't face a top 20 passing offense, but they're showing you they do have exactly what you said some closing speed. They can play the ball, they play their zone coverage pretty well. They've been very effective here through four quarters. They have done enough to win this game. Unfortunately, the offense didn't live up to their end of the bargain with the last three drives. Davey, looking at second and ten. He was four for four before that incompletion. Comes underneath this time, and a good stick at the 37-yard line. On the nice catch. And now the wrestling for the ball. Jordan Davis made the catch. Rock Vereen with the stick on the play. Third and four. Diggy gets rid of it. Wide open. Ward. Touchdown, Texas Tech. Red Raiders an extra point away from tying this up. The possibility of overtime looming real large right now. Tied at 31. What happened on this play, partner? We saw a lot of zone coverage throughout this drive. Take a look at this. You know what you don't see? Any safeties, you know what a veteran redshirt senior quarterback is looking at one-on-one -on -one and just hoping like mad that his wide receiver can get inside on that slant route. Eric Ward's had a rough second half. He's falling down on two of these interceptions. Is that an improvised move right there? Now that is going to be the slant route that's called, and you're hoping that you get blitz. You're hoping you get one-on-one, -on -one and you get Jeremy Baltazar, not Studemeyer, not Carter, and you get Eric Ward delivering and taking advantage of one of the rare cover zero. Zero safeties, all out blitz. Quarterback and wide receiver get it done. Deggy was six of seven that drive for 82 yards. And now the ball is in Minnesota's court. One timeout remaining. You just had a sense, didn't you? Yeah. You give the number two passing offense opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. This defense took it away twice, giving two interceptions. 
you had completions, you had plays there to be made offensively, you didn't. But you gave Texas Tech enough life and they marched down the field. Tie this game up late. That was their first score of the second half. It was going to be short. And Minnesota will start from its own 30 yard line with 106 to go. Hey folks, Capital One Bowl Week rolls on New Year's Eve with three games. Noon, it's North Carolina State Vandy and the Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl in 3.30 Tulsa against Iowa State. AutoZone Liberty Bowl in at 7.30. Less Miles LSU taking on Clemson in the Chick-fil-A Bowl. Capital One Bowl Week, Monday on ESPN, also live on Watch ESPN. Gordon Wetstein. Has a career long of 51 yards on his field goal attempts. Well, I'm not sure Nelson was ready for the snap and almost made something of it off the hands of Crawford Tufts. They were a little disconcerted and discombobulated on that play. Second and ten. Got to get to at least the 34 yard line to match that career long. Tell you what else that incompletion did. Texas Tech still has two timeouts. For Texas Tech, you're thinking here, if you can force another incompletion, we're going to get this ball back in regulation. A low snap. I'm taking this timeout of us. Got about three with 52 seconds to go. And Texas, Texas Tech, Tech, as you said, Brock, a please calls a timeout. So we have an idea of their intentions. What's Minnesota trying to do here on third down? Is this maybe a time you bring in Gray and, and switch things up at quarterback a little bit? I think in these moments, what do you do best? In the most critical junctures of these games, what do you feel most comfortable? We've seen plenty of wide open wide receivers for Minnesota. They've just been unable to be efficient enough to make those completions. So this is not a time that I, I think you just play it safe and make Get them overtime. force their time out, give them 50 seconds, not the way they've returned punts, not the way that they can move the ball up and down the field in their passing game. This is a moment here where Jerry Kill, uh, as I said earlier, his team's got to learn how to win. They got to learn how to finish these games when the opportunity's there. And I don't think it's smart here to just run the play, force Tech to burn their timeout. You're still going to give them 50 seconds. Clock still stops in college football after first downs. And this Tech team, as we've seen, when they're operating, really going, they don't need much time. Minnesota had a couple of chances to put this game away on some pivotal third downs and couldn't close the sale. Third and seven coming. And in field goal range, miraculously. What a turn of events. An egregious error and miscalculation by the true freshman, Philip Nelson. He tried to hit Derek Engel. And a great return on the interception. I love playing to win. You don't ever want to play scared. I don't mind that call. Unfortunately, Trey Porter, the nickelback, had tremendous coverage. He tips it up to a senior safety that makes his eighth career interception and gets it done. Angle did not have any separation there. He's got to try to find a way to make that his ball or nobody's ball. He doesn't. DJ Johnson makes him pay, but in my estimation, you've always got to play to win. Davey. Boy, what a catch. Caught. They're going to mark it at the 13 yard line. Williams wrestled that ball away from the defender. And they may be thinking six instead of three right now. Do you? No, this is one timeout. I'm setting this thing up in the middle of the field here, Mark. 
They run it with Williams. Williams runs it towards the middle of the field. And there they go. Ryan Buston. 16 to 23. And very much within his range right now. He's already connected from 28 yards tonight, but he had one block from 37. And Texas Tech calls its final timeout with two seconds to go. And there's the guy that made the pivotal play, the tipping point, DJ Johnson. No excuses, no explanations. They won't make them on the Minnesota sideline. But unfortunately, some of your youth and inexperience could not get it done when it mattered the most. And you know who did? The seniors and the veterans yeah. for Texas Tech. Seth Daigie, Eric Ward, DJ Johnson. Those players that have done it throughout yeah. their career over and over and over again at the most critical juncture. Yeah. Got it done. Players that have been in this scenario before when they're playing with an interim coach situation when former head coach Leach left. And <laughs> now Tommy Tuberville departing. And the beat goes on for the Red Raider Nation. Keep an eye in the middle of this line. Number 99, Rashid Eggman had the earlier block. He's six foot six. And the more athletic players. Let's see if he can get some penetration as Kingsbury watches. This will come from 28 yards away. And Jerry Kill is going to try and put him on ice. That's their last time out. What a heartbreaker of a fourth oh. quarter if you're Minnesota. For our Capital One player of the game, can't argue with this choice. Michael Carter, five tackles and two interceptions and one pass breakup tonight. That's that why you're going to be kicking yourself, Mark, because he did everything as a senior. He is one of those rare seniors that Minnesota counts on to get it done, and he did in that fourth quarter. Set your offense up, put it on a platter. And you just were unable to get those critical completions. Unable in your passing game, which has been a bugaboo all season long for Minnesota, and Texas Tech takes advantage. Left Kingsbury watching from up top. The head coach will take over right after the game. Ryan Buston for the win. And he knuckles it through. It's over. The Red Raiders come back. Chris Thompson, the interim head coach. Well, you couldn't have written a more dramatic script for him filling in. And heartbreak for Vereen and the rest of the Gophers, who seem poised and ready to put this game away with about seven minutes to go. And the agony almost paralyzing for them. But for Johnson and his teammates, a swift and lethal turnaround. And the dying seconds, the dying minute of the game, literally, resulting in a Texas Tech win. The second time that these two teams have played, and it's been right down to the last play. We've seen a lot of blowouts in bowl season. That wasn't the case tonight. Minnesota, a heck of an effort. But Texas Tech, just three points better in the end. That was a knuckleball, but doesn't matter how pretty it is, because every win is pretty. 34-31 the final. Coming up next, Sports Center with bowl highlights. And over on ESPN News, we'll have the trophy presentation. Good night from Houston. Right now, let's send it to Sports Center.